Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mount Carmel Area High School Red Tornado Football. Tonight, down in the Silver Bowl, it's a beautiful night. Again, perfect weather for a football game and perfect weather for homecoming because it is homecoming tonight. We'll be meeting those people later on in this broadcast. Tonight, the two and three Red Tornadoes will play host to the one and three Marion Catholic Coast. And, and, and when you say those numbers, they're odd for both of these teams. Both of these teams, uh, you know, do, do not understand how they're two and three and, <laughs> and one and three. Uh, Marion played one less game. Uh, one of their, right, the team they were supposed to play in the first game of the first uh, week of the season fell apart and couldn't play or whatever. So they actually have one less game. But uh, tough season for the Colts so far. And again, Mount Carmel area trying to right itself a little bit after the first uh, half of the season, which was pretty tough. This is a team where I think arguably, Wayne, you, you think of Marion Catholic, who must have played them about 25 times in the last three years, it seems like. Oh, definitely. You know? uh, <laughs> and these two teams here, and you're right, we've played this team 18th. This will be the 18th meeting between these two ball teams, uh, football teams, starting back in 1977 where the Tornadoes came out with the first win. And then we picked them up in the series from 1987 up to, the, up to this date and unbroken. And in the last two years, we played them postseason also. Uh, and again, you were right, uh, looking at those numbers of uh, what the two teams have done so far this year, it's uncharacteristic for both of them because these two teams are in the playoffs and, and they know what it's all about. Well, you, you look at these two teams, and, and we're used to the epic battles, and of course, every year, most of the time, they're undefeated. They're coming into a big game, and it's going to pretty much tee off the second half of the season. Somewhat unexpectedly, but also just as intensely, are two teams facing each other tonight. They're now desperate. Right. You're you cannot afford to lose any more games. You have any any hope of getting into that, that postseason. So I think, if nothing else, you got sheer desperation going for you on both sides of the ball tonight. Well, this is where this is the type of game where anything goes. You know, it's like that playoff game. You get down to the end, and you know darn well that you have to win the game. It's it's win or lose, and this is what the season boils down to right at this point for both of these teams. And you're right. And you know, both teams played very good games last week. Uh, Marion playing against Shemokin. Shemokin gets the ball the first uh, the first uh, kickoff drives down the field and scores right away. And of course, Marion did not buckle down. They came back and, and uh, played a very, very good game uh, after that point. And of course, as we know, uh, the Tornadoes coming off a, a heartbreak last week, uh, leading the game in the, in, from the second quarter on all the way down to about three minutes to go. And uh, just one or two plays and, and that was it. And that was a hard fought game for the Tornadoes. Yep. I mean, injury is still playing an, an integral part of the, of the, especially the defensive backfield for the Red Tornadoes. Again, a lot of new kids in there, a lot of young kids will be playing that backfield tonight. They're facing a sophomore quarterback on the Marion side of the ball. Of course, we had seen Coach Dukoski's son for the past four years, uh, T.J. Lawrence. T.J. Lawrence, being a sophomore, of course, a little bit inexperienced, but a kid that we we're told to be watchful of, that he can break this game open. He's, again, <clears throat> had a lot of things he needed to have gel in this game for everybody to get rolling on the Marion side, but Coach Dukoski felt pretty confident, just as Mount Carmel does, this might be the, the week now that we finally you know, make a statement. So whichever team does make that statement is the team that, that is still in the playoff one. At the end of this game, the team that doesn't is no longer in the playoff Oh, one. definitely. And that's pretty simple right there. And we've seen both teams, like uh, last week, we've seen some changes on the Tornadoes. And uh, as you know, we didn't do the, the broadcast, uh, but we had uh, Brown in the backfield and so did some excellent blocking. And of, and of course, number two, uh, Drew Lukavich playing in the safety position and had an excellent first uh, varsity game. White Camp kicks it off and he kicks it down deep down there to Tony Lee and Tony Lee is going to come up the middle of the field and he got himself a seam there as he gets over the over the midfield stripe. He's brought down by the Mount Carmel area by number 35 Robbie Shiloh but not before he gets a big return and the Colts are in Mount Carmel area territory to start this game off. Well you know Stan uh, Dukoski coming out again and uh, this team here, what they said, they, they don't have uh, the greatest running like they've had in the last couple of years, but they're going to keep you honest because this kid, even though he's a young kid, can throw the ball one. And yeah, we'll see what, what the Colts decide to do here as they get uh, some good field position to start the game and Lee brings them up and they're gonna run the ball and they're going nowhere. That's Randy Swank. He is all over the ball carrier, number 41, carrying the ball for the Colts, maybe 40. No, what, what number was he, 44, Wayne? 
41, you were right. Well, there is no 41 on our, yeah. on our program. Well, program. you know what? Somebody did say that they changed some of their uniforms. Do you have a 41 in, the, in our uh, lineup at all? No. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, we do not have a 41 here, so we're going to have to assume that that's Mamonigal. I'm guessing, and I'm not really sure. Stoppage of play here. A timeout by the Colts on the second play. The first play was a loss, actually, of a yard. So it's second down and 11 here for the Colts. And Coach Dukowski calls an early timeout here in the game to talk to, talk to his troops. And I'm looking at these numbers uh, real quickly. And there are going to be uh, several numbers that are on the oh, field yeah. tonight that we do not have. We do not know who those people are. We apologize. But the uh, Colt roster that we were given does not contain those numbers. So we're going to be guessing a little bit about who's carrying the ball and who's doing some of the things for the Colts. The Red Tornadoes, when, when we look at them tonight, one of the things that, that Coach Brennan talked about at Supper Club last night was make a statement. Make a statement, you know, whether it's defense or offense first, but stuff them or, or make a big run or whatever. He said, you got to hit. He thought they had a great hitting practice the other day. He said he's, he's not used to doing that so late in the season, but he thought they needed it to get a little bit of intensity back in there as Lawrence brings them up. Lawrence goes back to pass right away. He kind of lost this one up. Uh, neither neither one of those guys knew where that ball was going. It was it was trying to get out to Jimmy Mansell, the uh, junior wide receiver, but uh, not even close. As there you see a little bit of an inexperience from a sophomore quarterback as he just kind of winged that one and he got it out of bounds. Well, you got you got Damian Buggy coming down and uh, and uh, Brown uh, full steam on that kid, and that was just basically out of self defense. You saw how far out of bounds it was. It was a high pass, and and it was the amount of pressure that came from the defense. So it brings up the third and, and a long 11 for the Colts as Lawrence lines them up. They're now in their own territory, just over the other side of the 50. And he looks down. He was trying to hit the big guy, number 84 down there, Nate Phillips, another wide receiver, a sophomore. And you're going to see a lot of sophomores on this team. They're, they're a very young Colt football team. But again, he was off the mark, and the uh, Colts will squander some good field position and be in a position to punt the ball now on fourth down. Lawrence, just like the Red Tornadoes, the quarterback for the Colts is also the punter. So it makes it easy to win. We don't have to memorize one less number now. He's kicking down there to Wargo and Leonovich, and this one's going to go in Wargo's direction, but it's going to kind of stop dead there. It's going to stop dead about the 23-yard line where the Red Tornadoes will take over first and 10 on their first offensive series here this homecoming evening. And again, as Coach said, this is where they have to make their statement. It's on the offensive side. We have to put some type of a drive together, get a little bit of self-esteem, get our, our blocking schemes back again, and, uh, you know, get some running. Now, last last week we saw uh, Matsur carry the ball, and he's, he's doing an excellent job back there. Well, Shinsky brings him up. He's got Polarski in the backfield there. And it's going to go to Polarski in that first carry. And Polarski's going to pick up a yard on the play. It'll bring up second down and nine as he stopped in there by the interior of the Marion line. Colts jumping around on defense a little bit now. They get Selichinski's going to look to pass, and he looks at Mitsura. He has Mitsura, one guy to beat. Mitsura drops the ball now, and it's live, and the Marion Colts have recovered it at the 24-yard line. It's Marion football as he poked the ball out of Metallus's, or, uh, Mitsura's hand right along the sideline there, and unfortunately it didn't go out of bounds. So the Colts take over. The big break for the Colts here as they take over deep in Mount Carmel area territory here on the fumble. Ryan or uh, Lawrence will bring him up. The guy I want to talk about was Ryan, number 50. <clears throat> he is truly yeah. the best player on the team at the moment here on both defense and offense. Look for number 50, Jamie Ryan. He's committed to Notre Dame already, so it gives you some idea of the talent he has. And now he looks out there, and he was trying to hit number 14 down there in the, in the flat, Jimmy Mansell. And Mansell, that time was pretty good pass. Mansell just couldn't reel it in there. He, he couldn't get it down. The last time, uh, the last pass that went to him was behind him. That time he hit him right in the hands. 
They're trying to isolate on that left-hand side there, uh, number 14, trying to get a mismatch, uh, get a little bit of height out there. And of course, uh, you know, you gotta hit those guys out on the flat uh, when, when they're open and you have to catch that ball. Well, Lawrence brings him up. This time he keeps the ball and he's gonna be dropped dead back there. Very quickly, be number 58, Dave Brown, as he bursts through the middle. He drops him for a big loss all the way back to the 34-yard line. He'll bring up a third down. Are they going to place it at the 30? I'm not sure how they yeah, decided defense, that. But. Defense made a nice shift there. They left a little bit of a gap over the, uh, over the center. Brown was actually uh, heads up on top of the guard, and he cuts in between the seam between the center and the guard, and, and he, he broke through to make that, that tackle. It was a great play by Brown. That's going to bring up a third down now and about 16 for the Colts as they have done nothing but march backwards the two times they've had the ball. There's a wide receiver in motion and he's going to look over at that wide receiver. He's trying to get down to the, to the uh, tight end, which he did finally, number 84. We were holding 84 on the line, Nate Phillips, but finally passed the ball, but a flag flew right into the backfield and I believe that's going to go against the Colts. Again, he, look at all the pressure that he has. He's a great shot here. Look at being chased by uh, Brown again, number 51. And uh, who hit him? Uh, Cuff hit him there right before he released the ball. So uh, the, uh, the defensive line is, is doing exactly what they're supposed to be and putting an amount of pressure on. He's having a difficult time. In fact, we kept the uh, off or the tight end on the line that time. And, and you can see the amount of disruption right at right. this point anyway in right. the first quarter that that, that pressure is uh, putting on. Now pushes the ball back. It's going to bring up a, a third down, and we're talking 10, 20, 30, 30, 30 some yards, a little bit more than yeah. 30 yards now. And that's a that's a horrendous hole to be in. As I said, they've squandered two good field position moments. It's third and 31 when they finally press it down there, and Lawrence will be back there, and I'm assuming he's going to be back there to pass, and he is. He tries to get outside the end, he does. He's gonna run it, but he's not gonna go far enough as Litkavich comes up like a bullet there along with Cuff. Puts him out of bound down at the uh, Mount Carmel area 37 yard line where it's fourth down now for the Colts. And we'll see what Coach Dukowski decides to do here as they have not generated any offense to speak of so far. Number two back there on the defense for here the Tornado. There you saw the hit on yeah. the on the replay, you see how fast he came up, and there's a freshman. And he yeah. is a freshman. He's 6'1", 170 pounds. Uh, he's playing that uh, free safety position, and I'll tell you what, he's not afraid to come up and make a stick. So the Colts go for it on a long fourth, and they're under deep pressure as Lawrence got nailed. The cabbage was, was busy covering number 41 uh, for the Colts, I don't know who he was, but Nice coverage. Lawrence took a horrendous hit that time uh, as he let the ball go. The ball will fall incomplete. Mount Carmel area will take over on downs, and the ball will be set down at their 37-yard line where it's first and 10. Now, as you watch the Marion defense, they, they do run a five-man uh, five line. Uh, in that last series, they, they brought the linebacker up, and they ran a six. Here, they're doing it again. Uh, they thought they were doing it again. They were then we pitch to Polarski, tries to get around the end. He got a nice block there. He's picking and choosing his pathway. He's going to be brought down there by number 14 finally, Jimmy Mansell, but not before he picks up about eight yards on the play. It'll bring up second down and two for the Red Tornadoes. Second down and three for the Red Tornadoes. And yeah, Marion defense is doing a lot of movement up there. It sort of disrupts the offensive uh, line's blocking scheme. Uh, their, their linebackers coming up in the last series, he jumped into position. Uh, in, a, in a gap position there, made it a six-man line. This time he comes up, he taps the nose guard over, probably indicating in what direction he was going to move. Now they're back in the 6-2 again. This time we go to Matsur, he picks and chooses. Matsur is rolling. He rolls into Colt territory all the way down to the 44-yard line where it'll be first and 10 red tornadoes in Colt territory. See, that's what the, the, the six-man line is going to do for you. You get that good blocking scheme right up front. As soon as Matsura gets past the line of scrimmage, he's picking up those 10 yards, if not more. The Red Tornadoes seem intent on, on getting this running game rolling tonight. Uh, they want to do that. Uh, they tried to do that for the first part of the season. They've had limited success. Some games they did, some games they didn't. 
And Coach Brennan would dearly like to see them start rolling some offense up here against the Colts. This is going to go again to Matsura, and he picks and chooses his way up to about the 40-yard line. Again, a four in the play. They'll bring up second down and six now for the Red Tornadoes. You're talking about Stevie Matsura here. He's uh, 5'11", 185 pounds, and I'll tell you what, he's a tear not only on offense now this year, where he's starting to shine in the last two or three games mm -hmm. for us, uh, not only as a ball carrier, but also as a receiver. He's, he's picked up uh, many receptions in the last couple of games, but we know him as uh, definitely a, a linebacker, a tear on defense. Yep. That's where he made his name, but he's, oh, he's yeah. going to make it on offense, it looks like now, as Shinsky looks over. And he's got, uh, what number we have down there, 28 or 29? 29. 29, uh, Buggy. So he hits Buggy down in the flat there. What drew me off about Buggy, was that 21 or was that, uh, I don't know. No, it's 28. He's got the ball. I didn't see the, the brace on his knee. That's, that's, I've seen that now since the start of the season. Is he wearing it? I just didn't notice oh, what threw me off there. 28 is Nate Morgan. Or Morgan, I'm sorry. Uh, I got Buggy and Morgan uh, screwed up here. Morgan, Morgan on the reception. Harry's going to kill me on this one. But first and 10 now for the Red Tornadoes, and we quick hand off up the middle to the fullback. That's Lashinsky. I'm, I'm sorry, that's Brown. Brown in at the fullback position. Yeah, we're moving guys around here. are going to lose me in a hurry here. So Brown went in in the fullback. We've seen him play fullback a little bit last week at the Allentown Central Catholic game, the first we've seen him in the backfield all year, and now uh, he'll come out, and uh, Lashinsky will go back in. A, a definite size difference in those two fullbacks when you see them on the, on the field. He's gonna bring Morgan out here to his left, and pitch it to Polarski along that uh, weak side. And Polarski makes the turn and gets it around, and he's gonna be pushed out of bounds finally by number 14, Jimmy Mansell, but not before he picks up big yardage and another first down. Mount Carmel area now with the ball at about the 14-yard line of the Colts as they've uh, put together a pretty impressive drive here. Yeah, take a look at number 59, Bierster out here. He, he takes the defensive end, number 37 on. He, he gives him a good shot, and that's what gets Polarski out around, uh, going down the sidelines, sets him free. I like what Polarski did at the end. He, he easily could have went out of bounds, but he turned himself back in and squared those shoulders and took Mansell on. Oshinsky brings him up. Red Tornado's now moving, and they're going to go right to Polarski, and he's going to bounce outside. He's got some room now. He's got a block down below, and he pops into the end zone. Touchdown, a 14-yard scamper by Polarski, number 42 for the Red Tornadoes, and they are on the scoreboard first. It's 6-0. Last two, three plays, uh, the, the biggest thing that you could notice is the aggressive downfield blocking. You saw a lot of white shirts laying down on the ground in that series as we drove down the field. And that's what makes the big well, difference. Morgan had a great block down yes, there. Yes, he did. He, he was the one that really sprung him into the end zone as Whitecamp puts it up. And it is good. So the score now at the five minute mark of the first quarter, Mount Carmel area, seven, Marion Catholic, zero. And that was a nicely orchestrated offensive drive on, on the Tornadoes part, Wayne. Yeah, well, you know, that's one thing that a coach tries to impress. Uh, you know, when you're downfield like that, the play's never over. It's not over until you hear that whistle blowing. And there's prime examples right there. You start knocking people down, and you're moving the ball not 10 yards now, but you're moving 15, 20 yards. Yep. And there's a case there. Nate Morgan makes a shot on the five-yard line. And what that did was it gave uh, Polarski, you know, enough momentum. Right. To chance to make the cut and then get some speed into him. And into the touchdown. You don't have to knock him down. I mean, Morgan right. did exactly what you want. He just tied him up, and, and that's that's a touchdown. That's what you need. It's a little things in a play that sometimes make the play big. So White Camp will tee it up, and he's having himself a fine season. He's, he's, he was at Supper Club two weeks ago. He is just a great kid. I mean, I'll tell you what, personable, good-looking kid. I mean, just the kind of guy you want to have as your own. He really was. I was impressed with him. He seems to really enjoy enjoying himself here in his first year in football as a senior. Goes past Kasiolik. Lawrence picks it up. And Lawrence is going to come down about the 20-yard line finally. That's Ledkavich making the hit on T.J. Lawrence. So the Colts will take over first and 10, and this is the worst field position of the evening for them so far at their own 20-yard line. 
No, I'll tell you what, that ball looked like a pass when it, when it, when uh, White Cam kicked it. But when it hit the ground, it just took off like a bullet and went down an extra 15 yards before it hit the ground. And there was nothing else you could do but stop and pick it up at the five yard line. Yeah. So Lawrence brings him up, puts McCarroll in motion, and he's back to pass immediately. And he's looking out here in the flat again. He was trying to get to Mansell. Mansell's having a heck of a time right now <laughs> in the pass pattern. Again, high, and he turned Mansell around a little bit, and uh, just couldn't. Get, Mansell couldn't get a hold of the ball, so he's having a he's having a tough time. And now Lawrence yells at him in the huddle, <laughs> which I thought was well, odd because I don't think it was it was all that great of a pass to tell you the truth. But well, you know what they then say. Then they take him out. So it's it hits you in the hand. Hits your hand, you ought to catch it. You I guess. Better he, catch that ball. And the, and the scary part about that was the ball went back up in the air, and yeah. Justin Leonovich had a chance to intercept it almost. Yeah, Lawrence gave him what for in the huddle there. Now Boyle goes in motion. And this time we're going to hand off the number 41 for the Colts. He'll pick up about uh, two yards in a play. It'll bring third down and eight now. Brown, Matsura. And Swank getting up off the bottom. They were just lined up to three of them there. I'm going to say that 41 that is McMonagle. McMonagle. Okay, you could so, say whatever, whichever I, I, way I think or he, how you ever want to I think say. he is. I think it is McMonagle. Yeah. The other guy that's thrown in there is Kosciolik, and he's the senior running back. Uh, McMonagle, on the other hand, is a junior. And the big guy, 44, in there is Fierstein. Lawrence brings him up. Buggy contains. And again, you can see the sophomore quarterback's having a heck of a time right now as he was nowhere near the receiver. He was trying to hit Tim McCarroll, the wide receiver, down here along the Mount Carmel area sideline, but just couldn't get him. It'll bring up fourth and eight now, and the Colts will be in a punting position. You can see in the replay there that uh, Buggy did great contain. That's what you want to do. His job was not to let him get outside, and he didn't. And then when the last minute, he jumps up. And you can see the way Lawrence was forced to heave the ball so high. And that's a lot of the reason that he's not on the mark right now. That will come with a little bit of experience as he goes through his career. Right now, he's back to punt. Nice punt. Goes to uh, Wargo, who fumbled it. And I'm not sure who got it. I think we picked it up. Although I thought he was supposed to have enough room to catch it, which I didn't see him have. Well, uh, and uh, we're going to see what they do here now. It goes to the Red Tornadoes. That was a rather odd play. I think that that call is when you make a fair catch call. And uh, apparently the hand never went up for the fair catch. So the Red Tornadoes take over again in great field position. They're in Marion Catholic territory at the 49-yard line where they'll take over. And uh, they've uh, played very well so far in this first quarter with 3.58 remaining in the quarter. And everybody lined up here. Shinsky will bring him up. Shinsky hands it to Matsura, and he's going to run behind Brown there. He takes it down just about the 40-yard line. 45 yard, I'm sorry, a gain of four. It'll bring up a second down and six for the Red Tornadoes. And just a straight dive play, and that's all yeah. That's all they're looking for there, looking for Matsur, get Matsur past the line of scrimmage, and maybe with the speed and quickness and agility, uh, they can break him uh, either to the center or back to the outside for some extra yardage. Well, they send Brown in there for that play, a big body, as he, you know, and they're hoping he can spring that hole a little bit, and uh, Matsur only needs a little bit to get rolling. Now Shinsky's back in at fullback, and it's going to go to Shinsky, who's going to throw, and he looks at Lashinsky, was wide open as the fullback. Nobody covered him. He puts a head of steam on and takes it down to the 27-yard line of the Colts, where it's first and 10. Nice play by Lashinsky, and that was a nicely designed offensive play as they flooded that area, and Shinsky had the decision whether he wanted to run because he had a whole pass of blockers, but you see as he comes around now in this replay, Watch as he makes the turn in the corner. Look at, there's no one there, and he's looking right at Lashinsky, who has no coverage whatsoever, and gets himself ahead of steam down there before he's finally brought down by the quarterback, Lawrence. So the Red Tornadoes now first and 10 in Colt territory at the 27, and this one goes to Brown, the big fullback, and he's going to pop it down to the 20-yard line. I'll tell you what, number, number 11 reached out for the Reached out that time and, and Trip Brown up. Brown had yeah. some green right in front of him on that play. Some nice straight blocking, unless they were keying on on Jared Polarski that time. But 
Boy, some nice blocking up there with uh, Cuff, number 69, and Randy Swank and John Skinner on the left side of that line. Seven-yard gain from the fullback, and now again to the fullback. This time he fights his way. The ball's loose. The whistle, I believe, blew. There'll be no gain on the play. It'll bring up third and three. He was fighting hard for uh, for some room, but there was nothing there that time for the big fullback, so no, no gain on the play. Shinsky looks to the sideline and Buggy, there's Buggy, there he is, and he's got the brace on him. What am I thinking? I thought he got cured all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle, and, and he, they took the brace off. But Damien playing as well as anybody's ever going to play with a brace on his knee, I'll give him that. He's a tough kid. Shinsky still with the ball. He's got plenty of time now, and he decides to run it right up the middle, and he'll take it down to about the 18 yard line. Gain of two on the play. He's going to come up with a fourth and one in the way it looks when they put the ball down. I'll tell you what, as you look at that play and the last pass play, uh, Dave is doing some excellent faking in the backfield because uh, you take a look at the defensive end and the defensive tackle there. They're, they're actually tackling the, the man that's uh, fake diving going up through the line. Yeah, yeah. And Dave's just hiding that ball on his hip and, and scooting to the outside looking for receivers. So we'll see what the threat tornadoes do. They got the big backfield, Buggy and Brown in the backfield in front of Polarski. Ashinsky brings him up with a fourth and one. This goes to the big fullback, and I don't think he got it today. The They'll see where they place it down finally. We're at a tough angle here, but he's going to be close. I don't know if he got it or not. Where they place it, I don't think he did. They're going to measure it, but I'm not sure. They bottled the Colts bottled that up really well on the... Uh, the right side of the Mount Carmel line that time. He only needed a yard, but I'm not sure where he got where he got with it. You know, that's a, that is a tough play to defend because uh, from that series, we've seen about five different plays run from that. He didn't. He didn't well, get it. He, they're gonna they're gonna turn the ball over to the Colts on a fourth and one play. So the Colts come up big on defense, stop the Red Tornadoes, and now take the ball over down at their own 18-yard line. It's just a guessing game on the defense and on where they're going to stunt their, their defensive line, you know, off tackle or uh, going left, right, or sweep or whatever, because we saw so many plays run from that series. So Lawrence brings him up. He's got Kosciolik in the backfield, number two, the junior running back, senior running back, and he gives it to number two. And number two breaks free, and he's in the open. Let Cabbage got blocked by the umpire. And that's why that play gained so much yardage. So a big play for Kosciolik all the way up to the 39-yard line of the Colts where it's first and 10. But that's where a little bit of experience and you, and you learn yeah. either, to, either to, to stop before you get right to the, to the umpire. But <laughs> Run him over. He effectively took Ledkavich down and yeah. a big play for the Colts. Damian Chicken Tad on number 31 making that tackle. And good thing that he did He because uh, I'll tell you what, there was some green in front of him. 23 seconds remaining here in the first quarter now as we again go to the run. And again, Coach Golick breaks free. He's going to be brought down in there by Ledkavich and uh, Shikitano. Again, boy, I'll tell you why. Two holes in the left-hand side of that, that line, and it's just a straight dive play. There's, there's no faking about it. It's just a, a handoff. He's the only guy in the backfield, quick. first That's of all. That's it, so. you know. That's the end of the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen, with your score. Mount Carmel area, Red Tornado 7, the Colts of Marion Catholic 0. Take a moment here to remind you, you are watching WKMC-TV. We are the broadcast arm of Mount Carmel area high school. We are broadcasting directly from the campus at Mount Carmel area. You catch us every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock on Channel 13, courtesy of the service electric cable system. We are an instructional fixed cable service. Must be good. I had a week off and I still remembered it. You know, it's like riding a bike, huh? Come on. Well, after all this time, you should remember it. Well, yeah, well shouldn't, you know, shouldn't does. There's two different things here. We uh, remind you about Supper Club, as we always do. The Matucci family, of course, treating us like kings as always down there. <laughs> Chicken Parmesan last night. Uh, great crowd again. Uh, got to talk to the coaches. And we got to see uh, the freshman, Drew Letkavich, last, last night. That was great to see a freshman come and visit. It's always good they made him talk and all. That's always good, too. That's... <laughs> That's like an initiation, right? Yeah, always... yeah he, he was ready. He's, he's a good kid. I like him. I really do. He uh, A lot of poise about him, really handled himself well. So we get ready to start this uh, second period of play. The ball is sitting on the Marion Catholic 47-yard line. It's second down and two now. 
for the Colts. As Lawrence now has McMonagall in motion. He's going to hand it McMonagall. And McMonagall's going to get very close to the first down. He's brought down in there again by uh, the big linebacker, Yasenchak. Vince all over him, but he may have got no, he's not well, let's see that. The placement we have two different placements here all the time. You notice that? So the placement now actually puts him back. He does not get the first down. And there is Rock Deuceman in the press box, live and in person. You don't see that very often. <laughs> the live or in person part? Well, either one is. <laughs> he gives it to Kosciolik, and he's gonna pick the first down up barely. As he gets it out to about the 49-yard line, that's just enough for the first down. It'll be first and 10 Colts from the 49. I don't think. Oh no, uh, man, they moved it. They moved it back. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure why we get two different know. placements here. That's the third time they've done it. That uh, where they where they've moved it to. I that certainly does look like a first down. But he certainly had it. He was up on the 50-yard uh, line. I don't think the Rock Deuceman cares whether he's alive or in person, as long as he's one or the other. Huh. Well, it's a 50-50 then, right? Well, in his case, he's willing to go with those odds. <laughs> so that, that that's a first down, although it was a first down long before that measurement ever came out. I'm not exactly sure what we were doing no, there. Know why. So as we start this second period of play, the Colts still in their own territory, but barely at the 49-yard line as T.J. Lawrence brings him up. He's got Kasiola in the backfield as the lone back, and he's back to pass. He's got a lot of time this time. He's looking downfield. Uh, Leonovich was on the coverage. I mean, 25, 25 was the guy who was having Tim McCarroll. He was trying to hit McCarroll in a deep fade pattern down there. Leonovich all over it. Good coverage. And it'll bring up second and 10 now. Well, you see uh, uh, Coach uh, Dukoski sort of mixing it up a little bit. They've, they've had some great success on the left side of the, uh, of the offensive line moving the ball. And now all of a sudden, probably looking, the Tornado's looking for a little bit of a run play, and uh, they drop back, and, and he had a lot of time to throw that ball. So right up again, we hit the Kasiolik, and that play again is running for some yardage. As he'll pick up about five on the play. It'll bring up third and five now for the Colts. Here you see him coming. You can see the seam yep. that he has. There it is, right in front of you, as he cuts right around that seam and picks up a good five yards for the Colts. On the first quarter, the defense for the Tornadoes was shifting around. They were playing a little bit of gap here, a little bit of gap there. Uh, Brown moving back and forth. Now we're just straight head up, and the, and the guards are playing in the gap a little bit. Lawrence looks the pass. He's not going to get outside. He was trying to set up a screen pass, but Buggy completely foiled that attempt as he was all over Lawrence. He was trying to get the Kasiolik there, but even had he gotten it to him, it would have been, been ugly. So. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you. Take a look at Buggy on this play. You wonder how, you know, he's containing to the outside, and all of a sudden he does sense that it is a screen pass. Yeah. And just how he can turn on the afterburners that quick and yeah. put on that speed to uh, get into the face of the quarterback. It, it's just amazing to watch that. Buggy has deceptive speed. He really oh, does. Yeah. You don't think he's as fast as he is, but you're right. He has, like, that second notch that he puts in there, and he really goes at it. So Lawrence is back to punt again for the Colts. He puts a nice punt, and he's heading in Leonovich's direction. And Leonovich is going to be brought down pretty quickly, about a one-yard return. So the Red Tornadoes will take over on their own 16-yard uh, line, first and 10. Coverage good by Marion Colts that time. We were trying to set up a, uh, a line down here, a fence for blocking right in front of the Tornadoes bench. And, and of course, he couldn't uh, couldn't make the turn to get around to the outside. So the Red Tornadoes are back on offense now. Ball sitting where they placed it now at the 17 yard line where they'll take it over. And Shinsky brings him up, puts Polarski in motion. He's got the fullback directly behind him, and that's he looks at, at the, <laughs> the big tight end, and there he is, Yasenchak. Yasenchak was running free there before Lawrence finally brought him down. But not before a big gain and a first down. It's first and 10 at the Mount Carmel area, 38-yard line. I'll tell you what, we really, we really set that up nice. It was a, a great fake by Mike Lashinsky, number 45. 
<laughs> of course, whenever we see Mike in the backfield alone by himself, he's carrying the ball. Yeah. And he, he made a great fake up into the center line. It throws the linebacker, and Dave just pops it up and hits uh, Vincey. Fumble. Ball fell right out of, out of Shinsky's hands. He never did see where it went. We recovered it, and we recovered it by cuff pretty far away from where the original ball <laughs> He must have kicked it. <laughs> It fell right out of Shinsky's yeah. hand. He never really got it clean back from the center. It was bouncing there, and I guess someone kicked it because it went a pretty good distance before Tuff fell on it. It'll bring up a second down now and 13 for the Red Tornadoes. Morgan trots into the lineup. Litkavich comes out. They'll bring Morgan here to the left wide. As he's going to look to pass. Nice fake. And he's under a lot of pressure early there, and he's still moving around, but he's going to go down for another loss on the play of about two yards. It'll bring third down and 15 now as the Colts were all over that play in a hurry. Well, the, the, the key there was that the Colts had some good coverage, defensive backs downfield. They had, all, they had all the receivers covered like blankets. And, of course, you know, Dave had to put the ball down and try to pick it up on his own. Takes the ball of the shotgun. He looks downfield, and he's got Litkavich wide open. And he's being wide open and just tripped up at the last second by Kashi Oliger. That was a yeah. touchdown, but enough for the first down as they cross over into Colt territory now at the Colt 48. And that was a pretty play. Watch, yeah, the, watch Shinsky. Very, very quick. You have, you have Mature clearing out the zone, and you have Litkavich just curling back into the flat right there. And take a look. He scoots to the inside, and that was just a reach out and grab the ankle, and that's all that was. Matsura did a nice job. He blocked two yes. people at the same time. The one guy just got his arm reached out there and around him, or the cabbage was touchdown bound. So first and ten now for the Red Tornadoes as they begin to move once again on offense. He's trying to head to Morgan. Morgan made his cut and slipped down a little bit. So the ball went over him. Bring a second and ten now for the Tornadoes. See, all of Dave's passes tonight are, are just short. Three-step, two-step back. Yeah. He's turning already. He's, he's looking to hit the quick man out into the flat. Well, that's, you know. And it's safe. It's, that's what, he, what, it's what he does, though. He's a drop-back oh, yeah. quarterback. You know, he is not a scrambling quarterback. It's not what he does. It's not what he likes to do. Well, you put him in that pocket and give him a couple seconds to throw the ball, and you see just how accurate he really can be. Pitch out to Polarski. They're going to try to bring Polarski around the end here. He cuts back up, and he'll take it down to the 45-yard line of the Colts. Pick up a four on the play. It'll bring down, a, bring up a third down now and six. Looking for a student body this way. We have uh, Cuffy pulling. We got the lead blockers. We got Brown in there, and, and uh, you know, looking for uh, Jared to get to the outside and. Of course, the pursuit by the Colts was a little bit more than what we had blocking out there for, although Jared did pick up four yards on the play. 7-18 remaining here in the first half of play. And Shinsky again back to pass. He finds Matsura just a little high from Matsura, and that was a, a nice play where as Matsura made the turn there, he was gone. Oh, yeah. Nice pass. We had three guys out on the pass pattern that time, and just about all three of them were were wide open. We had Morgan out there and Matsura, and I'm trying to pick up who the other one was. I don't know if it was LeCavage was out there at the time. So the Red Tornado's now in punting position as a fourth and six now from the Marion Catholic 45 yard line, and they'll try to pin the Colts back. The Colts have not done much on offense so far tonight. He's going to kick it in front of Mansell. Mansell's going to let it bounce, then he's going to pick it up. And that was a mistake as he's going to be put down there by Buggy. <laughs> as we said about that speed from Buggy, he is deceptive. Oh, he yeah. is all over Mansell. Throws Mansell back to the eight-yard line where the Colts take over in deep, deep trouble there down is, there. Right in front of the camera. Look take a look at Buggy. Look at the speed he made that turn with. But and, and the thing is, Buggy caught him from behind. Mansell made the mistake. Uh, he had he had to slow down a half a step to watch where his blocking was at. And I'll tell you, Buggy showing that that great speed. Buggy having himself a nice football game so far here tonight. He's all over the place. The 
This one goes right up the middle as they try to free up Kosciolik, and he's not going to go too far. He's picked up about three on the play, two on the play. It'll bring up second down and eight. Now you see, take a look That's at Sura on the, on the if stop. they run the replay here. Take a look at Brown. Brown jumps into the gap between the center and the guard. And all night long, uh, Brown is double teamed. And you, you know, mm -hmm. you talk about being double teamed all night long, and that's only on, on uh, defense. And you're not talking offense here. And, uh, you know, Brown's taking on two guys, and, and that frees somebody up to make a tackle. Again, we try to send uh, Kosciolik up. Same play right at that tackle that they've had some success with. They are not having as much here. You'll pick up another two yards on the play. It's going to bring a third down now in about six. We've adjusted a little bit to that play, Wayne, as it was cracked open for two big plays a little bit earlier. Well, you know, and, and again, you take a look at this series. We are jumping. We're moving our defense around a little bit. Uh, before, we just played some straight heads up. There's Brown moving into the gap position again. And so is Beerster. And, uh, there's going to be a flag and a play. It'll go against the Red Tornadoes as they jump. Be a five-yard penalty. It will not be enough for the first down, but certainly no. makes it a much easier third down play. It'll be third and about one now. But, as you know, when, once you start getting uh, Brown moving from one gap to the other, you know, now you got a, you got an offensive lineman. That is a first down. Stopping to think a little bit about what his uh, blocking scheme is supposed to be. And, uh, and I think that's what the difference is right here at the, in this series where we're stopping them. Yeah. I didn't think that was a first down. I mean, absolutely truth, he could sit third and five on the scoreboard. I think he took it. He took. He took it as that. I don't think that was that was a, a five yards there. But then again, I don't really get paid to think now, do yeah, I? That's true. Lawrence trying to pass, and he was he was having a heck of a time there. He had buggy and for the Colts. Ball sitting at the 19 yard line. Puts McMonagall in motion, oh. and now they go offside and will march it five yards back. A little bit of here and there right now going on in the field. 525 remaining here in the in the first half of play. We have to take a moment here because all of Wayne's papers just blew out the window. Uh, I never really thought he read them, but apparently he does because he went, went down to get them. <laughs> Look at the pictures. <laughs> that was a nice gust of wind that just blew through here. <laughs> My goodness. I saw every piece of paper on his thing go flying past me. All right, Colts will bring him up. It's second down and 15 now. And it's going to be <clears throat> second down and 20 now as they march the Colts back again another five yards. And Coach Tukoski is going to want to probably commit suicide if they do this one more time. Well, of course, when those papers blew by you, you thought the parade was passing you by, Ward? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, you're all right. I thought I missed something yeah, there. <laughs> you're okay. The Colts have definitely shot themselves a couple of times during the foot. In fact, they've blown their whole foot off yeah. on this drive. As it's a second and 20, ball back inside the 10 yard line at the nine. And this is not an enviable position to be in if you're a well, Colt right now. This was the original line of scrimmage right here before yes. they picked up the exactly first down. Exactly where they on started off originally. Yeah. So Lawrence moves him up. He's got Mamonagal in motion again. Fakes it to Mamonagal, and he's going to throw it. And he throws downfield, and he's got big number 84 down there on the catch reception. That's Phillips. He's brought down in there by Litkavich, Matsura, Matsura. and uh, Yasenchak went over there just to make sure he didn't get back up. <laughs> well, a gain of about, oh, it's hard to tell what that's again. Where's the ball sitting at? The 14th, that's a five-yard gain yeah, only. Five-yard so gain. Third and 15 now. You know, it's a little strange you're running that, that flat pass there on the eight yard line with the sophomore quarterback and it gets a little yeah. a little tricky down at that point oh, he, dropped, the he ball. dropped the ball again the same thing uh, just never got a handle on the on the center snap yeah. he fell on it but it'll bring up fourth down at 15 and now they're going to punt and this has been not exactly a highlight reel in offense for the Colts in this last seven plays. Well, that, 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 and, that, and that's just a little bit of inexperience. They had trips to the left, and, and uh, you know, he was trying to get back in position. He's had a lot of pressure from Buggy and from Cuff and the two defensive ends all night long, and 
That's just a little inexperience. He gets the kick away, and it's a good kick. It's a line drive. It goes right to... Uh, Buggy? No, 27. No. Wargo. Well, Wargo takes it to the 30, see the 36 yard line of the Colts where the Red Tornadoes will take over first and 10 again in great field position. And uh, they've had some nice plays. They just can't break that one play here and get in the end zone. It's still only 7 0 at the 351 mark here in the second quarter. And Shinsky brings them up, but they've been close a few times here. And he gets Morgan out to his left here. And he fakes it, and he got Matsura, and Matsura in that slash play. He'll take it over the 40-yard line now to about the 39. I'm sorry, 36, 36-yard line. Now, well, Marion, Marion sort of looked like they were schooled on that play a little bit. Uh, we've seen that quite a few times this yeah. season yeah. for Matsura really to pick up a lot of yardage, and uh, they, they didn't move too much from the misdirection. There brings Polarski in motion now, and he's going to drop back to pass under pressure. He's got the big guy, and there's just Senchak, and now he's free. And he's got Polarski. Now he's free, and there he goes. Touchdown! Vince Senchak, a pretty play. Polarski set himself up for the final block, ready to go and put him into the end zone. And again, the big tight end lumbers into the end zone. Here you see it on the replay, and take a look how nice this pass play. First thing he does is a break a few tackles. Look at this. Two yep. guys, he goes right through the two guys. And I'm not sure if you'll see Polarski here down below him, but Pilar, there he is. There's Polarski waiting, and he makes a nice block, and that puts you Senchak into the end zone for a touchdown. And White Camp puts it up, and it is good. So at the 3:09 mark of the second quarter, it is now the Mount Carmel area Red Tornadoes 14, the Marion Catholic Coach 0. Some nice plays, and I'll tell you what, the line gave Dave a lot of time to just sit there. He turned around and he saw Vinci out. Uh, I guess what the Marion uh, Colts don't understand is that when you hit Vinci, the Rock of Gibraltar, you have to hit and drop your hand. Well, yeah, you know? I mean, you just don't hit him. <laughs> you say he didn't even waver. No. You know, like he, no, just, he just went right through them. Yeah, here we go, you know. But Polarski making a nice play, a nice block downfield, which we talked about. He actually took the uh, angle of pursuit off the defender because he went out to meet him and gave Vinci a lane to run behind and, and to pick up the uh, touchdown. Yeah, nice play by the by the Red Tornadoes, and that's that's what they're capable of. We knew they were, you know, and, that, and there you see the talent that they have. And just now, they, I said they feel confident. They, they talked about it last night at Supper Club. You know, there was no, nobody's head was down. They said, you know, we've got a half a season to go. We've still got the playoffs. You know, we just got to go through the next half of the season and win, and they look like they came out, and they're going to do that tonight. White Camp tees it up and whacks it downfield. This is a high one, very high, in fact. It's going to go to number 14, Mansell. Mansell's picking and choosing his way around, and he's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line. Matsura in on the, on the tackle along with Lashinsky. Number 55, Dan Evans, also in there on that tackle. Here you see Mansell, he's kind of picking and choosing there. He wasn't going anywhere. Lashinsky saw him make that turn outside, and that was the end of it. So first and 10 for the Colts, T.J. Lawrence will bring him up. He's had a heck of a time on offense so far tonight. The Red Tornado defense has, has had its way with the Colts. Kosciolik right up the middle, and that's a play that now goes nowhere. Right. Whatever the Red Tornadoes did to adjust to that. Uh, Brown all over the play down there. Number, let's see. 79 down there for the Red Tornadoes. He was right in the middle of the play. Skinner and Matsura coming off the bottom of the pile. So, and Vinci made a, a, a very aggressive move that time. He went up through the hole and actually hit the uh, runner as he was passing by to slow him up. But uh, I think we sort of uh, figured that play out since it ran so well in the second quarter for them, but they still couldn't capitalize on it. Fakes it, and he's got Buggy all over him. and. Again, Buggy <laughs> causing all kinds of havoc in that Colt backfield. Uh, Lawrence has got to think that he's that he's that he's lining up in the backfield for as quickly as he's there. Now you see you see Brown there. Brown's getting up to number 51. He's in the backfield all the time. On 
on any type of pass play that the Colts come out with. So, you know, he's doing what he has to do in the center of that line to disrupt everything. And he put uh, enough of pressure on this quarterback. You see what happens. Yeah, yeah, he's a young quarterback. And, and again, they're all over him. It's third and 10 now for the Colts. Lawrence has no one in the backfield, so you know he's passing. This time he's going to give it a heave, and he Ooh. gives it a shot. He's got Leonovich down there. And that's uh, Manzel, but I don't think Manzel was in bounds. And first of all, there wasn't any referee to tell him he no. was in bounds. There's no, there's that, where was the referee? I mean, who, who ran Nobody down the field there. and watched the play a, here? Yeah. Come on, folks. Here's the, here's the replay. Take a look at where this is. I don't think he was in bounds, and I don't think anybody, he, didn't, he never controlled the ball. He never had control of the ball when he got out of bounds. You was, can see it right here. Yeah, that's here poor. They're going to they're gonna bring it back. Poor He's position by the, the by the referee that time. Yeah. He was nowhere near the play. He had ample time to see where it was going. So the Colts now down at the 13 of Mount Carmel, and they give it to Kosciolik, and he dropped the ball as he's nailed immediately by Matsura. Skinner. And Brown and Skinner. Skinner. Skinner's in there. He just manhandled whoever was on him to tackle on this left-hand side to come through to make the initial hit in the backfield. So a second and 11 now as the Colts capitalize on a weird call and are down at the Mount Carmel area 14 here with 149 remaining in the half, knocking on the Red Tornado door the first time all evening. They had any kind of field position, and they give it to Kosciolik again. And he goes nearly nowhere. I mean, if he gained one, he did. The ball again popped loose, but they'll call it down. And they'll bring up third down and 10 now for the Colts. And it looks like a passing situation for the Colts, yeah. and they've not had a ton of success in that area either. Number 32 playing the right corner over here is Ben Hynoski. So he puts everybody to his left. He keeps Kosciolik in the backfield. And you know he's going to his left. He fakes it to Kosciolik, and there he gives it the number 41, McMonagle, on a reverse, <laughs> inside reverse. McMonagle goes nowhere as Yasenchak buries him down there along with, with Buggy, Buggy once Buggy, again. Buggy and Swank. And Swank was the other Swank in there. sandwiched him right away. I mean, as soon as he got it, uh, he was going nowhere, and it was a... Yeah. a, a a call that uh, Coach Dukoski was trying to get a little bit of motion. It sort of looked like a pass play, and he's getting a little bit of motion uh, coming to the left. And, of course, it's a reverse. It's a handoff going back in the opposite direction, hoping, I think, what they were sort of looking for is uh, Buggy to put a little bit of pressure on the quarterback. Buggy never left his position. Right, he stayed, Buggy, he stayed still uh, it's there. It's just amazing to watch some of the, some of the things that uh, Damien's doing over there. You know, he, he's aggressive at one point. He's not at the other. And uh, here's a case here where he could have been. He could have been chasing yeah. the quarterback in the opposite yeah. direction. He stays his ground. And he makes a, a great play. Well, he's, I mean, he, he's had some good games. He's oh, played, yeah. He's played some good games. Oh, I'm, I think not, I'm not saying tonight that. Tonight he's having a breakout game, yeah. I think. Defensively, he's, uh, he's everywhere tonight. Yeah. I'm just saying that he, he's just the, the mindset that yeah. he has tonight, yeah. that he's doing all this stuff on different types of defensive plays. And the Colts called the timeout here to, to get it straight as they have one last shot. It's fourth and nine now. Uh, Coach Tukoski came out and gave his young quarterback instructions. They're going to line up again in the exact same formation as they did in the last play. And this time he's going to drop straight back and swank. Early pressure. And there you have it. Cuff drops him in the backfield for the sack. And that ends the Colt threat as they lose yardage again on an offensive series. The Red Tornadoes take over first and ten at the 16-yard line of the Colts. Of the Red Tornadoes, I'm sorry. I think the quarterback, had, that was just out of uh, self-defense. He was looking like he was going to drop back, and he was looking for somebody over the middle. And, yeah. You know, he, he just had so much pressure at that point oh, that he swank tried. Swank in like a bullet. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was, he was almost on touch as he came through the line. He tried to elude Swank, and it was nowhere. That, I mean, Cuff was the only <laughs> one there standing there, and that was the end of it. So the th Red Tornadoes turn away a cold threat on what we said was a, uh, a, a call we'd like to see again somewhere. 46 seconds remaining here in the half. And Shinsky's looking for more as he uh, pumps and he looks downfield, still on his feet, and he'll take it down to about the 15-yard line. Maybe a loss on the play of a couple of inches or so here. Clock continues to run here for the Red Tornadoes, 30, 29 seconds, as Shinsky looks to coach. 
And I don't know whether you see a lot of players slipping tonight, and Dave was looking downfield and there was a man open, but, uh, you know, you see his feet give away slightly as he was trying to make a cut. Yep. So Coach Brennan whispered something there to him, and he just takes a knee. Wise play. That'll end the half here for the Red Tornadoes, and it's a good half. Uh, defensively, the Red Tornadoes have been all over the Colts, and they look very good on offense. I think you're going to see the stats bear that out when we give them to you in a couple of seconds. But for now, it's halftime, and it's also homecoming, so stay tuned and watch the homecoming festivities. Homecoming is a tradition at Ball Cardinal area with many young women competing for the honor of being crowned homecoming queen. Members of the senior, junior, and sophomore classes voted for their choices this past week. At this time, we would like to introduce to you the three senior candidates, two junior and one sophomore representatives that have been chosen by the respective classes. Our first senior candidate is Ms. Nina Zerkensky. Nina is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Richard Zerkensky and resides at 434 North Oakland Street in Mount Carmel. Her activities include Future Teachers of America, Future Nurses of America, Prom Promise, Powder Puff Football, Intermural Volleyball, Spanish Club, Student Council, Interact Club, Sea Club, and three years on the varsity softball team. Nina plans to attend a four-year college where she plans to major in computer technology. Nina is being escorted by senior member and captain of the football team, Jared Pilarski. Our second senior candidate is Miss Raquel Greco. Raquel is the daughter of Dr. and Mrs. Jeffrey Greco and resides at 111 Laurel Lane, Mount Carmel. Her activities include president of the class of 2002, president of the art club, secretary of tours, school operator, varsity cheerleading, all-American cheerleader, Spanish club, interact club, SAD, editor of the new staff, news reporter, Marcy Track and Field, and Honor Society and Student of the Month. Raquel is being escorted by senior member and captain of football team, Nick Bergster. Her future plans are to attend a four-year college and major in pre-medicine or biology, where she plans to become a surgeon. Our third senior candidate is Ms. Andrea Wysokansky. Andrea is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Ron Wysokansky at Denmark Gardens, Long Hollow Township. Her activities include co-captain of the Varsity Cheerleading Squad as well as a co-captain of the Lady Tornadoes and is a member of the track and field team. She participated in both in the volleyball and powder puff football. She is also a WKMC TV news reporter and anchor, co-editor of the Tornado Times and a member of SAD and the Spanish Squad. She is being escorted by Nick Tuck, senior member and captain of the football team. Andrea's future plans are to attend a four-year university and major in health sciences. Our first junior representative is Tristan Karpinski. Tristan is the daughter of Tammy Karpinski and Alicia Karpinski, a 15 of the team of Jerry Lane, Denmark Gardens, Long Carl County. Her activities include vice president of the junior class, member of student council, national honor society, Barkey Cheerleading Squad, Sea Club, Interact Club, Science Club, Future Teachers, Gifted Program, Odyssey of the Mind, Newspaper Staff, SAG, State Schools Committee, Computer Club, Forensics, and New Staff. She is being escorted by Ben Hynoski, a member of the Marshall Football Team. Her future plans are to attend a four-year college. Our sophomore candidate is Melissa Guzman. She is the daughter of Ken and Linda Guzman and resides at 430 West 2nd Street, Mount Carmel. Her activities include varsity cross country, cheerleading, track and field, speed club, National Honor Society, science club, and a member of PAUD. Her escort is Jared Owens, a member of the varsity football team. Her future plans are to attend a university and study in the medical field. Our second junior representative is Ms. Nicole Petrusquez. She is the daughter of Ed and Donna Petrusquez and resides at 1035 Stock Street in Caltmore. 
Her activities include art and interact clubs. Nicole is a staff station for the track team and a member of the marketing and symphonic band at PAUD. She is being escorted by Sue Calista, a member of the football team. Her future plans are to attend a four-year college. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a nice round of applause for these lovely ladies and their escorts. The final moment of anticipation has arrived, so at this time, I would like to introduce to you the 2001 Homecoming Queen, Raquel Greco. Starting with Raquel Greco, we can see the member of the football team, then she attends that. This will present the team of five, while two of the members of the football team present the homecoming for the ship. As these lovely young ladies are being escorted to their seats, we would like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Ryan Ticatano and Dave Dollybody for their cooperation in making tonight's homecoming activity successful. All right, folks, we're back here. This has been a very big halftime, Wayne. I want to say a couple things here. My best bud, my man, Ken Deuceman, has a double tonight. First, I see that his daughter makes it into the homecoming. Oh, yes. Court. Now, the only oddity there is that every time I look at him, I wonder how she's related to him. <laughs> but once we get past that, Melissa is a junior. She's in the homecoming court. And then he doubles this thing by showing up on the field to kick the field goal for the uh, T-102 kick for a car thing. Now, he's out there representing all chubby middle-aged guys, <laughs> which I am very proud of him. My only concern was that something very bad would happen to him, and almost did, apparently. But I'm, I'm happy to say it looks like he survived. He is not going to get the car, so he's going to have to keep his old car. That is true. I can guarantee you from that kick, he will not be seeing a car. But this is truly a Ken Deuceman night tonight, <laughs> I want to say. I, I he's the main it, man. I think Melissa certainly fared out much better. I, I would say this. <laughs> of, of the night, I would say yeah. Melissa was, was the winner there tonight. But, but uh, congratulations. Ken is my main man. He's a good man, and it's good to see him out there. <laughs> and I'm sure he had a few laughs doing it himself out there. But we'll get into the stats now, and what do they look like? Well, I'll tell you what, a well-rounded game. We're, we're certainly, uh, you know, moving the ball uh, in the air and on the ground. In the rushing department, we have 18 carries for 70 yards. Polarski, 5 for 41. Matsura, 4 for 20. And Brown, 4 for 12. In the passing department, we're 6 of 8 for 101 yards. And we've hit five different receivers. Yusenchak, of course, two for 55 yards. One was over the, over the middle for about 25. And the other one was, of course, his touchdown pass. Uh, Nate Morgan, one for eight. Uh, Lashinsky, one for 19. Uh, Lekavage, one for 18. And Matsura, one for one. Now, on the other side of the ball, and you can see how the defense is playing here, uh, much more aggressive uh, in the last uh, series, especially in the second quarter. Uh, they've held Marion Catholic here, 17 carries for 40 yards only in the passing department. And again, we had talked about this, the amount of pressure that Cuff and, and uh, Damian Buggy are putting on the quarterback, along with Brown coming up through the center there. In the passing department, two of 12 for only 68 yards. Marion Colts have four first downs, and the Tornadoes have seven. There you have it. I mean, that's pretty much what we expected we'd see in those stats. This is a game that, that pretty much the stats bear it out. The Colts having a horrible time on offense. I mean, they've shot themselves a few times and really have not gotten much offense passing-wise, almost nothing, as he's had a terrible time with a, with a, a ferocious uh, big red rush there. <clears throat> the Red Tornadoes look good on offense. We're seeing that. We've, we're seeing the other thing we've seen all season is the spreading around, as you said. Right. Everybody gets to touch the ball in this group, and that's that's a, a good thing. You know, you get a lot of guys touching the ball. You never know what's going to happen, and, and it's a good thing to see uh, the tight end come into the play a couple times tonight. Of course, one for for pay dirt. So everything kind of clicking for the Red Tornadoes. The uh, Colts are going to kick off to them here. i tell you who the kicker was, but he has a different number, too. But uh, LeCavage, the freshman, Comes up field there, and he's going to be brought down. It looks like he's brought down by the kicker. He is, um, again, the mysterious one wearing 37, but nowhere in our program. 
So the Red Tornadoes will take over to start this uh, second half on offense at their own 23-yard line, first and 10. They lead 14-0, and have pretty much had their way with the Colts, although the score not quite reflective of how right. dominant they've been. They just have to be consistent in this game, and that's one thing maybe they should learn uh, you know, uh, for the second half here is just to be consistent and play the same type of ball they did in the first half. Hand it to Jared Polarski down there. He's going to pick up about one on the play. It'll bring up uh, second down and nine for the Red Tornadoes. Lashinsky comes out of the game and the big fullback Brown, 51, goes in. An odd number for a fullback, but remember he's also a guard and he knows guard, so... <laughs> He is going to be 51. Yep. He trotted in and he trots back out again. So, oh, well, we took we it's took a out. We took uh, uh, Polarski out. <clears throat> we put Brown in. Brown comes back out again. Mature goes in as a receiver. Polarski, oh, and he is just tripped up there. Good penetration, penetration by number 84. Nate Phillips really got into the middle of that play, and Polarski went down on a shoestring tackle going to bring up a uh, third down now and about 12 for the Red Tornadoes as the Colts come out tough on defense here. Yeah, they come in a shot, shot right through there. And of course, Lashinsky, 45, had to take him on so quick. Uh, probably didn't even see him coming through the center of the line there because Lashinsky's looking for more, more than uh, more like the defensive end to come through. Shotgun formation. She's getting there a lot of rush. She's looking at Matsura. They got a screen set up. Matsura's got some room, and oh, he's going to pick that first down up. And, and then some. One guy to beat. He's got the Wargo as the lead guy, and he's going to be brought down from behind at the last second. At the not before, he's in for a big game down there. Matsura breaks it loose on the screen pass, and he's all the way down to the Marion Catholic 14 yard line. First and 10, Red Tornadoes. Yeah, great play by Matsura. He. And you take a look as soon as he catches this ball. He turns on the afterburners and he and he left a lot of the defensive players standing still where they could not make a play on him. And he gets all the way down uh, to about the 20 yard line and he had to slow up waiting uh, for, the, for, the for Warner block. to make a, make a move there. And here he was caught from behind. The big play for the Red Tornadoes and boom, just like that, they're in scoring position now on the Colts. This time it goes to Lashinsky. The fullback pops it up, and he's going right into the end zone. He got there, there were three guys there, and they had a hold of him. He just broke loose on him, went into the end zone. So at the 9.54 mark here in the third period, it's now the Red Tornadoes 20. The Colts nothing, and we're expecting the extra point attempt from White Camp. Yeah, you take, you take great blocking there by Dave Brown, 51, and Nick Beerster and Randy Swank, the center. But I'll tell you what, it was the quick, explosive move by Mike Lashinsky that once you get past that line of scrimmage, uh, you're in for the score. And White can and a flag. about 100 miles an hour, and a flag down the play. We'll see where that is as they now blowing the whistles. I don't know who that's going to go against. That's it's not going to bother White Camp too much, to tell you no. the truth, with, with the, with the uh, distance he's putting on the ball right now. But we'll see if we need to re-kick or not here. Talking to the Red Tornadoes, so it's going to go against, it's, it's going to be roughing the kicker, I believe. Right. So now the decision is what to do with that, as it'll be assessed, I believe, on the kickoff. Or am I wrong? Well, coach is looking here to see what uh, see personal, it points. is a personal yeah. foul. It's, it actually didn't run into the kicker. What they did was they ran over Dave uh, Shinsky. The holder. Yeah, they, they ran over the holder. So the Colts uh, just having a rough time tonight right now. Nothing seems to be going right for them, and that's an example of it right there. Score is 21-0. The Colts will line up to receive the kicks. Uh, Coach Tukoski yelling into the huddle there. Uh, just not, not, not a good night for the offense of the Colts. The, the Red Tornado defense has really come alive here. Uh, you've seen the two big games, especially Buggy. He's been all over the place. Yeah. And the two linebackers uh, playing some great, great football in that interior line. I mean, everybody's doing their, their part and some good coverage in that backfield. So White Camp's going to tee it up, and he's going to tee it up from. They're going to march this penalty off. Or I, I thought yeah. they were going to before. They're going to march this personal foul off the roughing of the place of the holder. So it's going to put the ball down at the 45 yard line of the Colts where White Camp will kick. So uh, I don't expect them to have great field position after this either. It's now confirmed, uh, apparently Ken Deuceman is still being seen by several trainers and, and doctors, <laughs> but it's confirmed that it's the farthest his leg has been off the ground in 13 years now. 
So I just want to say that congratulations. Now White Camp will kick it off, and we'll see if he puts it in the end zone from where he's at now because he's quite capable of that. All right, he kicks it on the ground, and it's going to go down there to uh, number 14, Mansell, and Mansell's buried. Let me guess who gets off and down there. We got uh, 50, is that 55, 55. or 56? 55. Came off 55 for the Red Tornadoes coming off that Dan pile. Dan Evans. So Evans on the stop for the Red Tornadoes. The Colts will take over first and 10. Ball just their side of the 20-yard line. That's the second tackle on special teams that Dan Evans has been in. Cut. I see the, I'm not sure they handed it to there. Let me see the number that gets off the ground. I think it's Kashi. No, it's number 41, 41 McMonagall. I've never seen much of McMonagall. He was told, we were told he might start tonight, but he's played sparingly. But McMonagall on the carry, picks up two yards on the play, brings up a second down and eight. Cuff makes a good play that time. He, he contained it the outside, saw that the ball was going in a, more or less a straight dive play over center, and he crashes down and makes a tackle. More or less, he made the hit on the line of scrimmage. Of course, the forward motion picks up the extra two yards. So timeout on the field here now, quickly by the Colts again. That's the second time they called an early timeout in the half as Coach Tukoski runs out into that huddle. Takes a moment here, too. We want to wish uh, a big happy birthday, of course, to, uh, to the producer of this operation, the Dave man. McPhee, a uh, guy that ties us all together. And, and from what I understand, I, I wasn't sure what I heard, but he, of course, is 57 now. I, I, uh, it was his 57th birthday on Thursday, I guess, from what I heard. So See that, or it's 39, like, uh, it's, who was it? Uh, <laughs> it was always 39. Benny? Well, he's either 39 or he's 57. You, you decide by looking at him which one you want to go with. I'm personally going with 57, but that's just my personal opinion. But you know, all kidding aside, a big happy birthday to Dave. He, uh, he has his hands full tonight. We're, uh, we're with a skeleton crew. He told me at halftime that uh, we're really running between cameras here. Four kids are out, all due to sickness. And it's amazing. Uh, you know, you lose four kids out of a production crew like this, and they're still putting this game on. So our hats are off to the crew, as always, but it's really yeoman work tonight as they are absolutely working short-handed. So T.J. Lawrence will take, take it back to pass, and he's under some Ooh. pressure from Cuff, Ooh, and he's Cuff. buried by Cuff. Oh. He was trying to hit number 11, Tony Lee, and he was just absolutely blanketed down there oh. by number 32, Ben Hynoski. Ben, of course, back playing after the, the injury to his thumb. You can see that he is playing with a cast on his thumb, a soft cast over a hard cast. So. It's tough when you're a defensive back to play with a cast on your hand, but Hynoski just was not going to be kept out of the game any longer, no. apparently, and that's, well, that's what... It, uh, and it was, I think, during the Southern game, it, 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 it had bent back so far. Actually, it touched his wrist uh, when it was bent back it, toward the ligaments or the tendons inside there. That Monday, then, he was out, and uh, he had it operated on that quick, and they, they told him that, you know, it would be a game or two before he would get back into, uh, into playing... No, Again, he's, he and, came and I'll tell you, what, you're right. You can't. There's a kid there, another one that you just can't keep off the field. No, he was. He was. I mean, I think he would have come back the next day. He's. He's just one tough hombre down there. They're gonna pitch it to McMonagall there in a pitch out. McMonagall's gonna try to get past Yasenchak. He barely gets past Yasenchak. Yasenchak and Hynoski, the guy we're just talking about, knocks him out of bounds. So the ball's gonna be put down at the Marion Catholic. 39-yard oh, line where it's second down now and about two. That time they ran, they did run right at cuff. They let a lead blocker, a halfback comes up and a pulling guard. And, uh, you know, you're playing some good ball when you need two guys to take you out of the game. Yeah. So we go to a traditional high backfield, something we haven't seen much from the Colts tonight. He's going to give it to the fullback. The fullback's going to go right up the middle there. It's Kosciolik playing in the fullback position that time. And uh, he'll, he'll Brown. Get, I believe he's going to have enough for the first down. I'm going to wait and see where they put it, because they put it in like eight places before it's actually down there. There <laughs> okay, we go again. Nine. So, that's yeah. nine places. There. So again, uh, he did not get the first down oh. from the placement of the ball. It's going to bring up third down and less than a yard for the first down for the Colts. And, and you can Coach Tukoski <laughs> saying, I want to measure this thing. I want to <laughs> see where the heck this thing ended up at. Well, it's, it's, it's late now to measure it. And I feel bad for the Colts because I'll tell you what, there, there were some placements here that are yeah. very questionable. And he, he did come up short there. I thought oh. he had had it, and he won't. So third and short now for the Colts here. 
Ball just over the 41-yard line of the Colts, where they'll try to pick up the first down here at the 8.54 mark of the third quarter here in beautiful Silver Bowl in Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania, on a great night for football. They're going to hand it to right up the middle there, and that's he's going to pick the first down up. Take it out to about the 44-yard line where it'll be first and 10. That's Kosciolik. I'll tell you what, if Yusinchek doesn't reach out and grab his jersey about two yards off the line of scrimmage, he would have picked up a little bit more yeah. than what he did. You know, he went through about 27 Kosciolics, all of them at Panther Valley. Oh, yeah. I think we get through the whole Kosciolik family, and boom, one turns up at Marion Catholic <laughs> now. How many Kosciolics are there, I'm wondering? Lucky I learned how to say that name about 10 years ago. <laughs> well, Lawrence brings him up. He'll pitch it to McMonagle. McMonagle's going to be brought down in the backfield this time. That's Yasenchak. He was all over. Fumble. Oh, he got the ball, and Cuffey picks it up. Yasenchak brought him down big time, and Cuff picked it up, and it's a fumble, and the Colts have fumbled in their own territory here at the 44-yard line, where it's first and 10 Mount Carmel area, and that was a the big linebacker smacked him hard. He dropped the ball, and Cuff was right there to take it from him. Yeah, we, we ran a stunt play on the right-hand side there. Uh, with the guard and the and the nose guard with Cuffy, and who's that Beerster on the right side, and that gave enough of a gap for Vincey to get through, and he comes through and he and he probably hit the the halfback much sooner than what the halfback thought he was going to do that, and he yeah. he fumbled the ball. Yeah, he hit Mc, McMonagall. I said McMonagall's Ooh. played fairly sparingly compared. Be a five-yard penalty on the Red Tornadoes as they jump before the snap, but McMonagall we thought we'd see more of, and we haven't. We've seen mostly Kosciolik, the uh, the uh, senior, Matt Kosciolik. He's five foot ten, 195 pounds. He did the does the workhorse work for the Colts in the backfield. So the Red Tornadoes take a five yard penalty. They'll start it now, first and 15, while still in Colt territory at the 49 yard line. They go back to pass right away, and he's got some guys open. He's got Matsura open over the middle. Matsura cuts it up the middle, and Matsura takes it down, and he's very close to the first down as he's down at the 35-yard line. And we'll see where they place it. He's going to be just short of the first down, less than a yard now, second down and less than a yard for the first down. Good Another, blocking the, the, the passing backfield. play looks good here. Look at, look yeah. at Shinsky here. Look how wide open he is over the middle, and he just turns it up and tries to split those two guys and nearly does. So Matsura playing playing another good game and, and uh, really finding the open spots out there for Shinsky to hit him. So we go to Polarski. Polarski takes it down to about the 33-yard line, gain a two on the play. It'll bring up a second down and eight. I'm sorry, first down. I'm yeah, now I thought it was the first down. He picked the first <laughs> picked down the up. the first down up. Now it's first down. I used to head on myself. It was the first down. Just yeah. at a different time. The Red Tornado passing game, really the story tonight, as they've clicked on all cylinders uh, passing the ball. I'm very, very happy to see that. Well, he's getting the time, and, and just like in that last series where Matsura makes the catch, uh, Dave had time because of Lashinsky and, and Polarski blocking very well in the backfield. There's Polarski, and he's looking at his blockers, and he cuts to the side there, and boom, he's still on his feet, and he's down inside the 25-yard line near the 24. Great swarm of blocking down there. We have Beerster, he had a whole Beerster wall there down there and, and Swank all the way down. Five, six, seven yards. They had the defensive line already pushed. It was a second down down, about one on the play for the Red Tornadoes as Polarski nearly picks up the first down and they'll line it up. He's got Lashinsky in front of him now as Lashinsky takes the, the snap and he hangs it to Wargo. Oh, Wargo, somebody pounced Wargo as he made the turn there. He ran, actually ran into, our, ran into his own man. Uh, some, again, uh, you take a look at the blocking down there, number 79, uh, John Skinner, sophomore on that left side, had everybody crushed down along with number 71, Marshall Meraki, in, in that guard position. And just for some reason, uh, Wargo had run into uh, the back of John Skinner, and <laughs> he bounced back about three yards. So a loss on the play. It's going to bring a third down and two now, as he lost a yard as he cut through the middle there. And Shinsky will bring him up. Eye formation, Polarski with the ball. And Polarski's going to pop it down. He's very close to the first down. We'll see where they place it. I believe he picked it up. Now be he careful. Did. I'm going for yeah, it. It's a first careful. down. I'm not going to be as scared. What the heck? 
first down. See? <laughs> I can't believe you didn't think I was going to make hey, that call. Hey, I wasn't questioning your call. I was, it's what's been going on down the field all night. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I waited for the last spot that time. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> if you wait for the last spot, you're okay. So first and 10 for the Red Tornadoes on the 23-yard line of the Colts. 534 remaining in the third quarter, and the Tornadoes are once again threatening here as Matsura with the oh, ball behind nice the big guy Matsura. Brown down inside the 20 yard line and down about the 19 yard line of the Colts. It'll bring up second down and about six. Matsura following Brown right up through the hole that time. It, it got congested a little bit and uh, Matsura very quickly adjusted laterally, yeah. uh, you know, one direction, yep. moving to the right, looking for an open spot. So we go a short pass. He's oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at, the, look at the tight end this time. Nobody around the Ascentiac. And he's in the end zone for the second time tonight. Touchdown, Mount Carmel area. And the tight end is eating up the Colts <laughs> right now on offense. <laughs> what a, a play. And again, there was nobody by him. And the reason it was a, a great fake, straight dive up into the middle. And, uh, you know, Vincey is wide open, five yards. Yeah, Dave, was, Dave just lofted that. That, that was obscene. He was that open. <laughs> White can't puts it up, and this one he didn't get, so he'll miss the extra point, and we'll leave the score at the 4:49 mark of the third period. Mount Carmel area 27, Marion Catholic zero. So the tight end having the game. No. Oh of the season so far for him tonight as we've hitting him in about every position he can. That time it just wasn't wasn't right to be that much that far open. In fact, Vincey was sort of slowing down looking for somebody to hit. You know, Vincey <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. is, you know, like, it's no There's no reason no to go into the end zone without somebody hitting you. Yeah, you know, you know. Exactly. Don't, <laughs> you don't put a different color on his helmet soon. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> He's all out of, been out all in shape now because nobody <laughs> hit him going in. So the big lad lumbers in there again, though, and he's having a night. The Red Tornadoes clicking here on offense. They're clicking on all cylinders right now. The Colts are, are absolutely hapless right now is on offense. And uh, they're not a whole lot better on defense right now as the Red Tornadoes are having their way with the Colts. It's sort of unusual, too, because uh, looking at some of the statistics as uh, the Colts come in here, uh, they were actually someone to be reckoned with. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they had a deceiving record, I yeah, thought, too, do. when you saw what they had. But Mount Carmel area controlling them all evening as White Camp's going to boot it down there. And this time he keeps it in the air. And it's going to go to 14. 14. Jimmy Mansell, my man. Mansell takes it up there. And uh, he brought down there by uh, Shivelhood, 35 on the on the tackle down there, along with number 30 getting off that pile. 26. Mark Ray, Kowaleski. And Craniac. And Craniac. Ray Craniac, number 26 on the play. Also. So everybody's kind of getting their uniform dirty tonight. Oh, yeah. He's taking a shot at somebody. And that's what you want to see. Yeah, that's what the great part of this whole program is. The Colts will tee it up first and 10 from their 38-yard line. It's T.J. Lawrence. That's a man in motion, and he's going to go back to pass, and he's under heavy pressure, and he is just Ooh. buried again. This time he was trying to hit Manziel. He's actually close to Manziel. He yes, was he well was. covered by, uh, by Leonovich and... Number two, let Cavish, the two L's in there. They had him well covered, and, and Lawrence is taking some some vicious, vicious. hits. I'm, I'll tell you what, Cuffy has labeled him. I think ooh. number 69 on the on the back of the quarterback all night long. Uh, but that time it was uh, Brown 51, and we had Cuff and also Yusenchek putting. But he still got the ball off, and I'll tell you what, a little bit more in line that might have been caught. Yeah. So second down now and 10, and Lawrence will back. Again, he's again trying to set up a screen pass. And look at <laughs> Cuff. Cuff. <laughs> look at Cuff. Nick Cuff, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, what a read that was. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. He's there. Watch this. What? I don't know if you're going to see <laughs> Cuff. He's going to stop dead in the middle of the rush and turn around. And he <laughs> look where he yep. is. He was with that first group. He turns around, runs back, brings the ball carrier down for a, for a yard loss on the screen pass. <laughs> <laughs> see number 87 we have in there, uh, uh, Rick Greco. 
is back. Back from an nice injury. Nice to see him back. Yeah, it's very good to see him back playing again. Brings up the third and 11 now for Lawrence, and he's just having a tough time, but he oh. does. Oh, Hello. Yesenchak tattoos. Number 84, the wide receiver, Phillips. Phillips goes down, and he's short of that first down by about Ooh. a yard and a half, and Coach Tukoski does not look like he's punting. No. Uh. So we'll wait and see. Now he puts two guys in. I don't know if he's going to punt here or not. Uh, 3.30 remaining in the third period, but he looks like he's going for it here. It'll bring up fourth down and, and, and just about two for the first down. Oh, that was a nice hit by Yasenchak. The big guy takes him down. It's time he hands it to Kosciolik, and he is I'm not sure. going to pick it up. I don't think he picked the first down. Nope. No way. No, nope. But I don't he want didn't to say even get that back. until I see these guys ramble around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage, actually. No, lost the yard. Matsura, Matsura coming right up in the hole that time, uh, created by the offensive line, and makes a, a great hit, a very low hit. And that's what took the uh, ball carrier down so quickly. So the Red Tornadoes add a little bit of insult to injury to the Colts here as they stop them on a fourth down play in their own territory. They take over first and 10 from the 46-yard line of the Colts. And uh, it's been a tough night for the Colts, and it looks like it's getting tougher as the night wears on. It's Matt Sewer in motion here, and he kind of stops there, and he gets lined up, and here comes... Number 30 for the Red Tornadoes on the, on the carry, and that's Mark Kowaleski. Kowaleski takes it down to about the 45-yard line. Gain a one on the play. It'll bring up second down and nine. Now we're giving uh, Jarrett a little bit of a rest here, running both offense and defense. And, and what we know from the last couple weeks is Jarrett has been uh, hobbling on a, yeah. a bad ankle, and I mean, it's about time maybe to He had some maybe problems at the end of the game at, at, last uh, week. at ACC, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's the thing that pr will probably plague him for the rest of the season on and off. You don't really get rid of that thing until you get a couple of months rest on it. Shinsky double pumps it there. He's looking down at Wargo. He's got Wargo streaking down there. Oh, and Wargo has it. it. And he, oh, and he drops I'm it. I'm not sure if he dropped it or oh. it was a fumble. <clears throat> oh. I thought he had it. And the, the, the defender pulled it out of his hand there as he tried to get it tucked. Yep. Great you pass. Watch, Did you see that? Take a look at the rush there. on Dave Shinsky. And Dave made the right move. He peeled to the outside and got himself open, but look at this pass, pinpoint right on. Yeah, you see, you can see there, number 25, he's got his arm inside of uh, Wargo and just can't get can't get his both arms around the ball. So it'll bring up a third down now and nine for the Red Tornadoes. The ball sitting squarely on the 45-yard line of the Colts. <clears throat> this time, Polarski on a, on a draw, and Polarski's got some room. And Polarski's rolling, Polarski's still rolling, and there he goes, he's gonna take it into the end zone. Jared Polarski, a 45-yard touchdown run right down along the Red Tornado sideline, and that was a pretty play there. Good. He got himself an inside, or yep. a delayed handoff, he had a line of blockers, and he made a cut. Great call by Coach, set up, looked like a pass here play. Here he comes, right and at it was you. a delayed draw. Watch the turn, and now watch the speed. 11 had an angle, couldn't get him. Look at, look at, look at this guy. Yep. Look how he, how he, he the, the speed just went right past him, and boom, into the end zone. <clears throat> White Cam for the extra point attempt, and he puts this one up, and it is good. So at the 2-12 mark of the third quarter, the Red Tornadoes now out to a 34-0 lead over the Colts, and this game has turned into a blowout. Yeah, some good, you know, I'll tell you why. You take a look at the blocking that's been going on since uh, about the middle of the second quarter. Uh, you know, we've just been doing what we wanted to do down on the uh, on that line of scrimmage, both offense running and passing. Dave Shinsky tonight, and you can see the difference when Dave gets his time. He gets back there, he sets up nice, and boy, he puts the ball right on the money. And you can see what you give uh, Polarski some some blocking in front of him, and with his speed, he can turn it into six points very quickly for you. White Campbell, tee it up. And kicking down on the Colts, and it's been a rough third quarter for the Colts. It's really been. They've been blown out of this game here in the third period, and there's still 2-12 remaining in it. I would sort of question the uh, the uh, fourth down play down there. I, yeah, it was, a, know, little, it was this, a little early in the game, I think, uh, to go for early. it. I, I did wonder that, yeah. too. But, again, you're already down 27, so, you know, maybe it is time to go for broke. I don't know. 
was a hard one to, to get a hold of there, and he a little bit uh, shallow, and he gave uh, somebody else touched the ball other than 14, number 20. 20. I'm trying, I'm trying to see who it was myself there as he gets off the file. That's 26, 26 for the Colts. That's Mike McMonagall. Yeah, 14 sort of uh, came, took over to the ball every time we kicked off or whatever. He he touched the ball. I think 26 <laughs> pushed McMonagall, pushed him out of the way this time. <laughs> And we got number 30, Kowaleski, playing the defensive end on this right side. We got some new numbers in there. Lawrence back to pass. And that one Ooh. is tipped. That buggy. Was that buggy again? Buggy up there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my goodness. He's just in everybody's face tonight. Marion Catholic's going to have a nightmare about buggy when it goes home and goes to bed tonight as 29 has been just all over yeah. this football field. He is just unable to contain Damian Buggy tonight. Number 56 coming in in the right defensive tackle position, uh, Eric Beaver. <clears throat> Mikey Lachinsky playing the left linebacker position. It's a movement here in the Colts, unfortunately. Number 47, Matt Kufta in playing the corner, left corner position. So the Colts will take a five-yard walk, and they've had a few of them tonight. There's still 2-0-1 remaining in the game as this third quarter now is <laughs> slowed to a crawl. And you wouldn't think so because it's mostly been on the ground on our oh, side, yeah. but not a lot of incomplete passes and stuff like that, but it's kind of crawling here. And Kosciolik up the middle there, and Kosciolik is going to be brought down hard by Lashinsky in number 47. 47 Kufta. put the whack out of, down there, and that's Matt Kufta. Ooh, nice nice hit. He's a sophomore, 5'9", 175 pounds, and he put a put in on Kosciolik. It'll bring up a third down and 12 now for the Colts. Colts trying to run a little bit of misdirection play that time. Uh, we do have some uh, younger kids in there, but I'll tell you what. Kufta stands up and makes a tackle like that. I'll tell you, he's going to see some more playing time. Back to pass goes Lawrence. This time he has some time, and he has a receiver down there. That's number 11, Tony Lee. Lee will, will uh, catch that pass down near the 41-yard line of the Red Tornadoes, enough for a first down. So the Colts in Mount Carmel area territory now here in the waning minutes of the third quarter and this third quarter may last forever i'm not sure <laughs> did it move at all did that clock move at all no not too much i'm wondering here a little bit as this game has really gotten slow here lawrence airs it out there he's looking down there for number 14 and there'll be a flag on the play as they got tangled up down there Inoski and uh number 14 and that's mansell so it'll be a penalty on the red tornadoes and we'll see where they place the ball when they figure out where the penalty was and what they want to do. And the pass interference is the call. And they're going to set the ball down, and we'll see where in a minute here as they're going to confer one more second, decide where the best spot for it is. 26-yard line? There it is. 15-yard, yep. 26-yard yep. line where it'll be first and 10 Colts. to McMonagall, I believe, and he's going to be brought down right at the 20-yard line. I think a second down and four down for the Colts. Skinner, again, you know, there's John Skinner playing both offense and defense. Number 79 making it, making tackle down there. Sophomore, 6'5", 265 pounds. <laughs> he's an upcomer, isn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll be hearing that name. 
A second and long four now for T.J. Lawrence as he brings his crew to the... He's going to hand it off to Kosciolik, and Kosciolik goes nowhere. Matsura grabs him from behind and brings him down for no gain on the play. It'll bring up third down now. You take, you a, take a look five. here. Uh, Matsura is back there pointing at the, the, the left tackle for Marion Catholic is getting down, and he's... Uh, getting down a three-point stance, but he's moving his arm right before. There's three downs now that he's done that. He's, he's moved his left arm uh, quick enough right before the snap, which is moving. And about five. Simon inside handoff to number 11, and he's going to pick up some nice yardage there. That's Tony Lee as he comes on that inside handoff out of the flanker spot. He'll pick up enough for the first down all the way down to the Mount Carmel area. 15 yard line where it's first and 10 Colts. That's like a cutback play that we run all yeah. the time. Yeah, very much exactly the same. Exactly the same. You have a trap block in there on uh, the pulling guard, the right guard pulls and trap blocks down onto our tackle, our defensive tackle. Lawrence is going to take a. Back to pass here, and he looks downfield. And, oh, oh, man, I, I tell you. Oh, my goodness. An 84, I think he caught that. He did. Yeah, he, he did. Got he the got the ball. Phillips, but Yasenchak. Yasenchak and Masur oh. were standing there, and the two of them, I swear, hit him <laughs> at the same time. I don't know how he caught that ball. So he takes it down. It's going to be second down and about two. The ball's sitting at the Mount Carmel area, six-yard line, and the Colts have now made their deepest penetration of the evening, and they are actually threatening to score here now at the 11.05 mark here of the fourth quarter. He keeps it on a keeper as he goes around the end, and he's going to be bumped out of bounds right at the four-yard line. Uh, down there, Buggy down there to take him out, along with uh, Leonovich, Matsura down there. So we'll see where they mark that, and they mark it as a first down. He picked up the first down. It's now first and goal from the four for the Colts. And I guess, apparently that's all he was looking for. Is the coach was just looking to pick up the first down, give them four more downs from the four-yard line, but some great lateral pursuit by the Tornadoes just to give them only one yard, and it was a tough one yard to make. Going to go to Kosciolik. Kosciolik trying to get over swank. to tackle. He may pick up a yard, but Swank all over him. That plays it down. Actually, he picked up less than a yard to take it through. They're up second down. And uh, well, I'll wait and see where they actually nah, no, no. <laughs> Three guys touch the ball on this thing before it goes down. But second down, I'm still going to say four. Yeah, he did not really gain anything on that play. The Colts would dearly love to put this thing in the end zone and get some points on the, oh, yeah. on the board and not get blanked out here tonight. The Red Tornadoes equally determined not to let them get any points. Again, Koshiola can this again. Time swank all over him. He might have lost a little bit now. It'll bring up third down and a little bit more than four. Swank's just hand manhandling that uh, defensive man, or the offensive man on the right-hand side. It, twice now he's come through the hole, broke through, and uh, makes the tackle. And that's what, that's what they need right now. They need that interior line to step it up to make the hit before they get into the linebacking crew. Is that your lunch they gave you? Yep, I like is this it? crew. I like this crew a lot. All right, T.J. Lawrence now is going to look to pass and or look, run. Look at, look at Cuff. Cuff almost. all over him. He throws it in the end zone, and he's got it. That's Mansell for the touchdown. Cuff just barely didn't bring him down in time. And the Red Tornadoes now have been scored upon at the 8-9-24 mark. It is 34-6, big red. I thought that was your medication. They were finally sending it up. <laughs> wasn't sure what they were doing. <laughs> In the white bag, it has. I got a, you know, you, only this crew could do this. We're going to, the Colts will line up for the extra point attempt, and if he turns, I'll know what his, I think he's 37, and I don't have a number for 37, so I'm, and he puts it up, and it's good. So, at the 924 mark, it is Mount Carmel area 34, the Marion Catholic Colts 7. And give me a chance here to read off the uh, the group of people who are here tonight. Uh, they sent this thing up in a popcorn bag, <laughs> half full of popcorn, and told me I can keep the popcorn. <laughs> you gotta like this group. We uh, we look at the crew list tonight on the cameras is Dave Else, Steph Yeager, Jesse McPhee, Steve Sakaitis, 
Paul Walters, and Amy Hampton. The, grips, the grip is Scott Bullock. Still photography is Sophia Andriano. It was, it was on the other side of the popcorn bag. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> the director of tonight of this whole operation is Josh Yeager. And I have written on here, injured reserve is Krista Petruskevich. So no need to go any further than that. And on the bottom it says you can have the popcorn. So you can tell this crew knows how to get their name mentioned. Just offer me food and things are going in the right direction. <laughs> I'm impressed with their wherewithal on this. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't notice though there were a lot of kernels well, in there. I'm not gonna popped. I'm not gonna be a I'm not gonna be choosy here. Oh, okay. Food's food. So the Colts are lining up. Number 37, the mystery kicker will kick. And he'll be kicking to Wargo, Polarski, and Letkavich. And that's a nice kick. That is a nice kick to Polarski in the middle. He takes it up up the middle. Ooh. Looks like he almost got face masks there. He's brought down by number 26. That's Mike McGonigal. And he's brought down just over the 25-yard 25, uh, 25 line to the 26, where the Red Tornadoes now have it first and 10. Trying to keep up with all the new numbers as they get in. Number 48, Pete Kulik out there on the right side. Fumble. <clears throat> Fumble on the play. And something flew up in the air. I wasn't even sure what that was. Hope it's not like a body part or anything. Shinsky falls on his own fumble there. He'll bring up a second down now and 11. The Red Tornado is just going to be happy to run this clock out. And it's like the never ending clock. I'm not sure if it'll ever run out tonight but they're going to try. Right at the middle, that's Kowaleski, and he's got himself ahead of steam, and he takes it up over to 30, out to about the 33-yard line. That's what you like to see. You like to see these young kids come in. These, and this is the time they have to prove themselves. Oh, yeah. You know, they're in there, and what's nice about it is here's Pete Kulik, number 48, going in. Uh, he's played in this series as a wide receiver. And uh, Kowaleski, number 30, is the tailback. And, and you're in there with that first string line doing some great blocking as they've done all night long. You know, you want to make sure you make the right cuts and do what you need to do. He's going to try to pass here, and he has. Oh, my goodness. Pete Kulik. Look Kulik. at this. Kulik's made himself a nice move. And he's rolling. He's got a foot race with number 26. Oh, and, and he's going to take it in. Great, great. Ladies and gentlemen, number 48. Pete Kulik <laughs> Great. on the reception and the, that's a 67-yard <laughs> pass play. Shinsky to Kulik, and Kulik puts it into the end zone. Nice speed by Kulik, you know. Oh, yeah. 26 had an angle on him down there, and he was at a beat. I thought he was going to take him down McGonagall, McMonagall, but didn't even get close as Kulik scampers Excellent. it in, and, and it's now 40-7 to seven Red Tornadoes with White Camp's extra point to come. And it's up and good. And so now at the 7.56 mark here in the fourth quarter, it is now Red Tornadoes 41 and the Colts of Marion Catholic 7. And that was pretty. Say, I'll tell you what, at times people do listen to some things I do say. I know you don't. But, uh, you know, there's Kowaleski making a nice play. And now all of a sudden, Pete Kulik turns around. And, boy, he made sure he had that ball, oh, yeah. didn't he? Yes, he did. He, he watched it right into right into his hands, made the catch, turned around and, and hit the corner. Some nice running there some and a great pass by Dave Shinsky to get it right where it had to go. Yeah, but all the right things happen on that play. And I said, <laughs> Kulik, that speed at the end there. I thought 26 had him oh, on yeah. the angle, but he just turned it on and popped it into the end zone. You know, sometimes that's all it takes for, for a kid, a young kid coming in like that, uh, getting a chance. And, uh, you know, turns the season around for him, uh, lets him understand exactly what needs to be done. He works a little bit mm -hmm. harder the yep. next, you know, on the off season and comes back to another good season the next year. You're right. <clears throat> White Camp ready to kick it off. Nice kick. Oh, nice kick. 
Lee with the ball, and he's going to take it up the sideline there on the Marion Catholic side, and he's going to finally be brought down in there. Number 30, 35 was one of the guys that came off that pile down there for the Red Tornado. That's Scheibel, and he's had a nice game on the kick uh, coverages too tonight. And we'll see what I believe to be a whole group of different numbers, and we do, so now, Wayne Shivalwood, will try to keep you abreast on them. Scheibel is going back in. Kowaleski, number 30, is playing the corner. Steve Polifka, number 58, is playing that defensive, left defensive end position. Lawrence is going to give it to Lee in a flea ficker. Lee got uh, Mansell, and Mansell's got it. Let Cabbage will bring Mansell down. Well, that was good coverage, too. It's amazing yeah, he, he was, was able there, to catch yeah. the ball. We had him covered. But uh, Man uh, Mansell on a big play for the Colts, and just like that, it's down at the 25 yard line of the Red Tornadoes. We see a replay or not here. Well, I thought for sure he was pretty well covered in the play. It was a flea flicker. Flicker uh, Lawrence pitched it back to number 11 on the uh, Colts to Tony Lee, and Lee then heaved it downfield. But it's first and 10, and Lawrence has him up there. And that'll be a penalty on the Red Tornadoes. That's never a penalty. I, I'm going to say this 100 times. I do not believe if a defensive guy jumped the line back. of scrimmage should be a penalty, but... That's when they change. Oh, they got oh, a legal procedure. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm talking about us, and it's not. Hey, maybe they finally caught somebody down there. Yeah. Number 61, Jared Owens is in there playing the right tackle position, left tackle position on defense. Number 77, uh, Joe Tom Cavage. <laughs> 56, the nose guard we have in there is Eric Beaver. He's going to air it out down there, and he's out of bounds. That was a nice play down. Number 35, Shivalwood, was all over number 25, uh, Timmy McCarroll for the Colts. Nice play by Shivalwood in the corner there for the end zone, uh, preventing a touchdown. Michael Lashinsky, number 45, playing in that linebacker position. One of those little reverses around the tackle there, and he's going to be brought down very quickly. Yeah, 58, Steve Polifka did not move, didn't go after the, the flow. It was misdirection play with the reverse coming back in his direction. He stayed his ground and makes a good tackle there for a no-gainer. I'm still third and 15 for the Colts. That was number 16, Pat Boyle, on the carry. And we're not seeing much of him tonight. Boyle is a uh, junior, five foot seven. Number 26, pound. Ray Craniax playing that left linebacker position where Matsuru was at all game. Puts Lee in motion. And he's going to go back to pass. And that was broken up well down there. That's uh, 50. Let me see. We took 58 down yeah, there for Polifka. the Red Tornadoes. Polifke, and he uh, broke the pass up. Brings up fourth and 15 now for the Colts, and that was a nice play by Polifka. Yeah, Steve made a nice play. He came in, and, and Steve's, you know, he's he's another uh, upcomer. As you look at uh, six foot, he's got a little bit of height, and the quarterback turned around, and Steve had his hands up, and, of course, uh, the quarterback wanted to just drop the ball off and never could. So fourth down now, Lawrence goes back, and he's looking downfield, and... He finds his receiver, number 25. Number 25 will step out of bounds very quickly down there. He steps out of bounds at the 15-yard line. That's uh, McCarroll on the catch. It'll bring up a first and 10 for the Colts at the Mount Carmel area 15. Number 47, Matt Kufta on the coverage drives him out of bounds. Again, another reverse, reverse. going in this the opposite time he's got direction. Uh, number 16 on the carry. That's Pat Boyle. He had a head of steam on him, but he's going to take it down to the 
That's where they place it down at. About the eight yard, nine yard Inside line. Inside the 10 at the, at the nine. Ben Hynoski coming up there to make a, a good tackle. Lawrence lines him up on a second down at about five. This time he hands it off to Kosciola. Kosciola inside the five down to the four. And that'll be enough for a first down. It'll now be first and goal from the four for the Colts. Number 75 coming in on the left tackle is uh, John Aramek. So Lawrence will line them up. The Colts still pretty much playing with their first team offense here late in the fourth quarter. Oh, and he nice. hands it out to 57, but number 56 for the Red Tornadoes all over that play, Eric Beaver. And that was a nice defensive play by Beaver. Yeah, he made a nice move to the outside. Uh, Beaver is playing the uh, the guard or nose guard position. He just made a loop to the outside and came right up with the tackle. Number 50, uh, Jerry Lepotsky in, a junior, six foot, 240 pounds. He's up a second down, it was no gain on the play, and he handed to Kosciolik, and Kosciolik will take it into the end zone from four yards out for a Marion Catholic touchdown at the 425 mark now of the fourth quarter to score. Mount Carmel area 41, Cath Marion Catholic Colts 13 with the extra point attempt to come. I'll tell you what, that was a very good defensive series by that uh, the squad that was out there, the new squad. They're all new faces. Uh, kids played a, a very, very good series all the way down the field. Two-point conversion will be good. The Colts, uh, Lawrence, to number 84. Nate Phillips, a six foot two wide receiver. So that'll leave the score now at Mount Carmel area 41 and the guests here, the Marion Catholic Colts at 15. And I think it's now time for Stan to take out some of these kids, let some other guys play in the waning moments here. Uh, this thing I never quite understand is when you score a meaningless touchdown at the end of the game like that, what does it do for you? Well, not only that, you know, the two points, unless you're, and, you know. Unless you're running a play that, that you want to see if it's going to work or whatever, well, you know, for a two-point conversion. But to me, to me, when you do that, you got a team like Mount Carmel area who's already substituted as, as far right. deep on the bench as they can get, and you're going for a two-point play. I, quite frankly, I question that. I'm not too sure. And then you wonder why some teams keep whacking it to you, you know, instead of putting some other kids. And that's part of the reason. <coughs> the Colts will kick it off. A little cooler here tonight now is the... No, oh, yeah, the front's moving, the cold front's moving in. Number 37 for the Colts will line it up and do the kicking honors for us. I wish I could tell you who he is once again, but I cannot. And we got the trio back there, <coughs> Wargo and Polarski and Ledkavich. He's a good kicker, too. I love, this kid cooks off very well. Bounces right in front of Ledkavich. And <laughs> he's going to be brought down fairly quickly. And around the Mount Carmel area, 25-yard line where it's first and 10 red tornadoes. And for as tall as he is, he got off the ground about three feet just to take that bounce. Well, you know what? You see what this, what the breeze is doing. It's, you know, where we're standing, we can feel it coming in. But take a look at the flag there. The flag is uh, blowing pretty hard. And that ball hit the ground and just, you know, you, you expect it to at least move downfield a little bit. And I think that's what LeCavage was waiting for. And it just bounced straight up in the air and the wind held it up there. He had to go up for it. Graniak into the offensive lineup now. Number 10, Mike uh, Sosnowski in as the quarterback for the Tornadoes. He hands it off to Kowaleski, and Kowaleski takes, takes it up over the 25 to the 29 yard, and get a four in the play. Number 72, Jesse Volkler in, playing in the tackle position. Kufta brings the play into Sosnowski. 65, Bob Wills. And off again to Kowaleski, and Kowaleski running hard here. Yes, he is. And he takes it up to the 29-yard uh, line, very close to the first down. We'll see where they set it down and make that call, man. 
Number 66, John Novak in. So it's going to set down at right just the pass to 29, so not quite enough for the first down. It'll be third down now and less than one for the Red Tornadoes here. The 323 mark of the fourth quarter. And number 81, Scott Novak, is playing in the tight end position. There are too many guys on the field here for Marion Catholic. There's just no way there was going to have that many guys. They saw him wander on. He wandered back off again. So now they're at the right amount. And Sosnowski brings him up. Tailback is number 31, Damian Chicatano. Long count, and Chicatano stopped in the backfield. He will not pick up the first down. McMonagle on the uh, on a stop. He's got to get that M out of his name, put a G in there. <laughs> McMonagle is a tough one. McGonagall I can do it. McMonagall I keep having trouble with. So it brings up fourth down now, and now it's about fourth and two for the Red Tornadoes, and I believe they're thinking of going seven. for it. Number seven, Jeff Hicks goes in. <clears throat> no, they're not. They're going to kick, and they're going to have a new kicker. That's what they're doing. Number 47 is going to line up, and that's Matt Kufta. He's going to line up and do the kicking duties for the Red Tornadoes, and he does, and that nice is a kick. punt. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, my goodness, what a kick from Matt Kufta. Woo. <laughs> Well, that thing looked effortless, too, oh, when yeah. he left it go. My goodness. <laughs> you get a little reaction from the crowd here, too. You know, everybody yeah, ooted on that baby. so. That was a nice kick. Yeah. <laughs> Number 70, Sean Paul's in. Playing in the line defensively. <clears throat> 82 in there. Brian Pliff going to go and get his place there. So it's first and 10 now for the Colts. Ball on their own 26 yard line as Lawrence brings them up. And he's gonna go back to pass and he's looking deep. He's got number 14 and number oh, 14 let it go right through ball. his hands there. He, uh, he had Brian Polifka out there on coverage. He had a step on him and he had a perfect pass to him and he just couldn't hold on to it. So. And again, you know, you, you take a look here. We got two minutes and eight seconds left and look at this score and their first team is still. Yeah, first team quarterback for the Colts still on first. Their whole uh, line. A couple of first team. Uh, their, their whole line yeah. is still first team. And yeah, they have a couple of, they have a new, one guy new in the backfield, 37, but uh, Kosciolik is still in there playing too. And I question that. I mean, I'm going to openly question that right now. It's a movement now on the Colts, and they've, <laughs> number, number 67 there for the Red Tornadoes. And I'm not sure who that is, to tell you the truth. I'm sorry to tell you that he's not listed here. Playing a right defensive end position, number 89, Jason Pahutsky. The 67 was doing a dance to the line. <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally hit the ground. So it'll bring up uh, second down now and 15. We have a number 70, 76 on the field, and we don't have We have a couple the, numbers here that we don't have. Roster, we apologize yeah. for that. An inside handoff goes to number 37, and we can apologize for him, too, because he's still the guy. We don't know who he is. He's wearing, you can tell he's wearing a new uniform. It's a different, almost a different color white than the rest of them. So it's got to be new. We used to have them listed on their away team schedule, I guess. Yeah. Number so, 89, Jason, Jason Bowitsky making that tackle for no, on that play. It's going to bring a third down and nine now for the uh, Colts, a six-yard pickup on the last play at 139 here, remaining in the football game. And Lawrence will go back to pass again. And he's looking downfield again. He's again looking at Mansell. And this time, number 82. And <laughs> I'm not sure what they're going to call there. Uh, quite frankly, that was Brian Polifka. Uh, unless they're calling that face guarding call when he had because he didn't turn enough. Yeah. Uh, personally, I think it was good coverage. Uh, personally, I don't think they should be winging the ball downfield with the, with the starting quarterback. But hey, here you'll see it again. And, and, and it's very fast motion for a second there. But. Look at the pass. It's a perfect pass. I mean, Lawrence really put it on there. And you can see, I, I, don't, I don't know what they call there. But quite frankly, I did not see a defensive interference call there. But they did. And so the Colts will move into, uh, well, they're going to, yeah, Mount Carmel, they're no. going to move a lot more than that. But they're only going to move up to the 41-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from the Colt 41 here as Lawrence brings them up to take a snap. Minute 28 in the game now. Dave Sebastian, number 34, playing this corner. Left corner position. Lawrence looks back again. He's going to heave it again. He's it downfield this time and oh. just 
nearly intercepted down there. That's number 28 on the coverage for the Red Tornadoes, Nate Morgan. Nearly intercepting Ooh. the pass, and that was the that time he was nowhere near his receiver. I'm not sure if the receiver was in the wrong spot or what. But it'll bring up a second now, down in 10 now for the Colts. You see it again, and you can see that he was not close to his own receiver, but Morgan was. Lawrence will bring it up in a Mount Carmel area again. He drops it this time. And uh, it'll be a fumble recovered by himself. I don't know what happened. The, the snap never came clean, and he was bobbling it. So Lawrence falls on his own fumble, but it now brings up a third down and about 12 as, as he takes a two-yard loss, and more importantly, the clock should have kept running, and it does. Under a minute now for the Colts, and we're assuming he's going to heave it downfield again here. You think? 83 uh, Pulowski over there in that corner now, and that's where they've been heading to for the most of the game. And he does, and uh, this time over the receiver's head. Again, uh, Kufta down there on the coverage, along with 85 Tyler Geary. Or is that 35? I'm not sure which number that is. Tell me, get your binoculars on there. Uh, is that Geary? That's Geary. All right, Tyler yep. Geary. So. Brings up a fourth down and 12 now for the Colts at the 43 second mark. And uh, still playing all first teamers on this offense. Yes, as, they uh, are. We have number 37, Ryan Beaver in uh, playing the right guard position, or the right tackle. Inside handoff, we've seen that a couple of times, and uh, he's loose in that backfield, but he's going to be brought down. It's a first down. He'll be brought down in Mount Carmel area's 44-yard line and pick up the first down on the play. <coughs> when we say the Beavers in there, you know, it's, I don't know about you, but it's always a good feeling when there's a gap contingent on the team. You know, I mean, just feel more, <laughs> oh, we've se seen that, more secure. You know, yeah. over the years, how many how many of those uh, gappers came over and, and yep. really? You know, contribute it. Bill, Bill, and Sandy. Of course, I graduated with Sandy. Uh, big supper club people. You know, oh, yeah. always there. Yeah, you're and Just right. the Beaver family itself. Uh, known them many, 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 many years. Just a great all-around group of people. And there's a lot of them. So I got to say nice things because they'll come find me. But, but Bill's a stalwart of the supper club, and now Sandy. Uh, comes pretty much every week too, and sits with them. And sometimes she brings her daughter with them. <laughs> so, they have a nice contingent there from Locust Gap, and that's good to see. Lawrence will line him up, drop back, and he's going to look for a quick pass down there. And number 15 takes it, and he runs out of bounds with it to stop the clock. And number 15, I, don't, I can't tell you who he is either. Next time the Colts send a lineup, they might want to send at least seven or eight of the same numbers up. I think they did it on purpose, to tell you the truth. No, it worked. So 27 seconds left. The Colts now stopping the clock on the out-of-bounds pass. And I mean, quite frankly, now it's, they it's, put, it's, they it's time to end the game them. here. You know, I mean... It's really, it really is. This is this is not right. I don't think this is going deep to number fourteen. I'll tell you that now. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, he is back to pass under a lot of pressure, and he wings it, and he wings it into the middle, and, and it's, it's intercepted. intercepted. All right. There you have it, number forty-seven on the play. Matt Kufta. Matt Kufta brings it up, and that, ladies and gentlemen, will be the end of this ball game. Mercifully. Way to go, Matt. Matt Kufta on the interception, right at the goal line. And he'll run it up to the uh, Mount Carmel area, 25-yard line, where it's first and 10 red tornadoes, and more importantly, 13 seconds left. One more play, and we can put this thing into the books. What does that mean? We can go on it? I think, yeah. Uh, I heard that on another telecast, and I thought oh, I'd use it. They thought you'd use it. <clears throat> now, one of the things that I think, as we, as we see them line up here, we can see up 2nd Street. You see, and this is amazing, like 14 guys have hoisted Deuceman on their shoulders and are carrying him stretcher-like to his house. What better tribute than that? I mean, that's amazing. And we take a knee, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the football game here tonight at homecoming. Mount Carmel area Red Tornadoes will come away with a homecoming win, and they will even their record at 3-3 three and three here at the six-game mark of the season. The Colts will fall to 1-4, and four, and it pretty much has eliminated them from postseason yes. play, at least in district play. I'm not sure where they'll end up, Eastern Conference or not, but their season continues to get a little bit longer. The Red Tornadoes have bounced back, had a big offensive game tonight. 
played defensively very, very well. I mean, very well. Completely stifled the Colts until the, until the near the end of the game here. So they've got to be happy. No injuries. You always like that. And, of course, you're, you're lining yourself up here as they shake hands. You're lining yourself up for the North Schuylkill battle. Of course, Coach Chesney, and he'll have his group hanging from the rafters by the time we get there, as usual. And that'll be a dogfight. Uh, again, they're having a, a down year a little bit, having yes, a tough year. That seems like all of us around here are right now. Well, they but, call uh, them rebuilding years. That's what, yeah. that's what we call them. Uh, as you know, they, they had an excellent team last year and yep. gave everybody fits last year. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's just you can't have it all the time, and you got to yeah. realize that, and you got to rebuild and reload and, and take it from one year to the next. Uh, we, I mean, we expect a, a horrible game over there, as always. No. <laughs> they are just going to come at you. They always do. And uh, it's down at that stadium, and that stadium has, has been misery <laughs> for us over the years. I'll say that. It's always a tough place to play. Uh, you never walk away with a big win. You walk, you squeak your way out, and then you crawl onto the bus and go it's home. It's a W yeah. at the end. You're right. You know, and with him there, he's got him so sky high. He's a good coach, knows our program well. So it's always a tough game over there. And again, as we said in the beginning of the telecast, Mount Carmel area in the unenviable position of having to win every single game now right. uh, to stay in in uh, competition for a district playoff. They are well within one. Don't don't make any mistake about it. If they roll the dice here and go the rest of the season and win every game, quite frankly, they'll probably have enough points that'll place them somewhere in the district. Not first, but somewhere. And of course, the only bad part about it is they all the the uh, the ugly position of probably traveling. You know, to the hinterlands of the north of District 4, all the Wild time. Wild we've, been, or, we've been up there before, or, though. Uh, but uh, but this is where they start. Though. This yeah, is the, the, yeah. They have to realize that. They they have to start somewhere, and this is the Absolutely. game tonight. They, they should have learned something tonight. You know, they have to be consistent now uh, from the kickoff right to the very last uh, second on that clock. And, yeah. and we haven't been that way yet this year. This is a good uh, good stepping stone for them, uh, a good learning lesson maybe. Yeah, and, and that's what they needed. I mean, uh, again, we, we stress this is a team that does not have a ton of experience in some of the key positions. Right. And uh, they, they struggled a little bit. They had some bad breaks. They had a ton of injuries. They still have a ton of injuries. They're not, they're not quite, although you are starting to see, uh, you see Hynoski now back in the game a little bit with his hand bandaged. Uh, you saw Greco make a cameo appearance. Yep. And, and again, he's coming back, but it's going to be slow. I mean, I mean, the guy hurt his knee. You know, it's not something to fool with. You're going to be very careful with what you do with him. So, thankfully, some of them are coming back, though, and that, that's a good, uh, bodes well for the rest of the season. We expect to uh, see you on Friday night down at North Schuylkill, and uh, we'll be there, and the crowd will be there, I'm sure, and it'll be a tough game, and we're going to have to go in there, and, and it's a playoff game. Every game's a playoff. Right. And that's the way it'll be for the rest of the season, so... I mean, if nothing else, it's going to make for some exciting football. That and is true. You're not going to walk in any game thinking I'm okay. I mean, every game is going to be a dogfight. And, of course, you look down the line, you got Wild Loosing. Uh, Wild Loosing, one of the favorites in District 4. Oh, yeah. They're going to they're be down here. So, uh, that's Which a, is that's good. That's a break. That's a break for us. And then, unfortunately, we got to travel to Sydney's Grove with the final game of the season at Sydney's Grove. And that's been a tough place for us. Been a very tough place for us. We're going to end up playing there, too. So there's some exciting football coming on down the line here. I'm looking forward to it. The season's changing. It's going to start getting a little cold, and those hits are going to get a little harder. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. A little louder, too. Yeah. That's, a, that's a great part. And, and uh, again, I hope they uh, they continue with what they did tonight, and that's what they needed to do. I think they will. Uh, you know, from the two of us also, uh, uh, Queen in her court tonight. Yes. Congratulations yes. to all, all uh, those, all those uh, girls. Rocky Greco and, and, yeah. and the court. They, they looked yeah. very nice down there, and it was great to no, see. They did. That's, it's beautiful. It's, you know, it's always good. Homecoming. There's always something oh, special yeah, about great. homecoming, and you see them down there, and it's just a neat thing. So it was a great night all around. Uh, we expect to see it, as we said, on Friday. We're going to be there, and we're going to be trying to make friends on the North Schuylkill side, and that's not always an easy thing, but we're going to try. We so found that out. Yes. We'll hope, hope to see you all down there. Uh, member Supper Club is tomorrow night, uh, 6.15 in the back room of Tucci's. Show up there. You'll hear all about North Schuylkill, and you'll hear about all the little nuances about this game. Ooh, so nuances. On behalf, you like that word? I'll oh, be, I'll be there. Then. On behalf <laughs> of WKNC TV Sports, I am Warren Altamore. And Wayne Brokenshire. <laughs> Good night. Thank <laughs> you.